It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy, Renee, Alex, and Lori all in-house. We'll welcome Lori back from her triumphant tour of Japan. Talk about the Apple Music and Apple Awards and why Apple changing the map in Russia is a big deal. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 690, recorded Tuesday, December 3rd, 2019. Podcast in a sack. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. It's that easy. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash MacBreak. And by Calm, the number one app to help reduce your stress, relax your mind, and help you sleep. Get 25% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash MacBreak. And by Plex. With Plex, you can organize and stream your personal collection of movies, TV shows, music, and photos anywhere on any device. Go to plex.tv slash twit and enter the code twit10 to get $10 off a lifetime Plex Pass subscription. This offer applies to new subscribers only. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Apple. And the big news in our neck of the woods is back from her triumphant tour of Japan. It's Lori Gill of Sickburn from the USA. <laughs> Yay! Yay! I'm back. <laughs> Is it kind of hard now to go come back down to earth like a normal person instead of the rock star that you were in Japan? It kind of is. I've been on tour <laughs> with bands in the past, but this one was so intense and so amazing that I, I did. I come home, came home and was like, "Oh, here we oh, are back in the US." I gotta do laundry again. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Oh. You, yeah. You're, you set a reminder on your phone, do not quit all of your regular jobs yes. for at least 60 days until you come down from this high. It might, right, be, it might exactly. be a good idea, but let's wait. <laughs> That's Andy Anako yeah. from WGBH Boston, Anako.com. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Leo. Hello, Andy. Also, Lori, Lori's a cohort in crime at iMore.com. <laughs> Renee Ritchie from iMore.com slash Vector. Hello, Renee. Hello, I'm Lori's little helper, and I'm it, damn proud of it this week. Is it this week. snowy in Montreal today? It's not. It's cold, but most of our snow has disappeared. Oh. I, I'm sure it's going to come back. It's just take, trying to encourage us outside so it can freeze us again. <laughs> it's just teasing you now. Yep. And in studio, as always, well, not as always, but as lately, which is great, oh, Alex yeah. Lindsay of, from the Pixel Core. It's great Good to have here. Alex. He's uh, He's got a little time off for the holidays, and he goes back on the road, I'm sure, in uh, 2020, but... Yep. Glad to have you while you're around. So, <clears throat> Lori, anything, uh, just highlights. <laughs> I, we have some pictures, which is kind of fun. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Don't play the video. It'll blow people's ears. It's too loud, too noisy. <laughs> and their yeah. minds. Like I said, I will, no matter how long I live, I will never be this badass. She <laughs> really, oh, no. really badass. We have to turn it down because we don't break your speakers. This is yeah. you performing at a small club, a little thrash court, a small club. And where did you yeah. say? Uh, this That particular club was in um, right right in uh, downtown Tokyo. Um, I, can, I actually can't remember the suburb. I'm sorry. It was The name was very hard for me to remember. Look Those at this, pictures right there the were taken in. Um, that was taken in uh, 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 Kash, Kashigawa. Kashigawa. Okay. Man, I'm, I'm having trouble remembering these names already. Um, Which we also is got amazing to play in you spoke, Ashikaga and Osaka. You spoke perfect <laughs> Japanese while you were there. So that's really. <laughs> just surprisingly, it just came yeah, out of my mouth. It just came out. <laughs> did they, did they, but love it really you? was a fun time. Did they love yeah. You? We had a great reception from everyone there. It was incredible. I, I expected to be sort of dismissed at, you know, at least one or two of the shows, but everybody that watched us was really friendly and excited and they just had a really great time and tried really hard to talk to us even though we didn't speak the language at all <laughs> very patient with us it was really nice so everyone nice. was nice there they, we never met a single person that was you know kind of blase or dismissive or anything they were all super friendly there it was really great thanks love to, japan it was so much fun <laughs> thanks to the band photographer yo sid 27 on instagram <laughs> I, we don't even know who he is yo underscore sid 27 but that's where the pictures live uh on instagram obviously a japanese fan who went to the uh, 
the shows. So great. Yeah. Congratulations, Lori. That's really neat. Thank you. Thank you. And you, you. It played, really was fun. You played the Budokan. <laughs> well, in my mind, it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, Next trip. All right. Next trip. Yeah. Next trip. You, yeah. you, you, yeah. you, 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 you established your street team that's going to go out there and make sure the next, that the ground swell happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we just set that we laid the groundwork for for the fame that will <laughs> that will come later. <laughs> you, you, you've, you've created that first generation of people that are going to say, oh, well, you pro well, you know, it's it, I'm glad they're so popular. Of course, I saw them in a 50 seat venue <laughs> like in the suburbs and I still have them yeah. on. I still have them on cassette. Yeah. And now they're sellouts. <laughs> Uh, Apple had a little event. Turned out it wasn't really the event that we were hoping for, like we were all going to go and stream it live and talk about it. And this was yesterday. Uh, Renee, I guess you were the one who talked me down on this one and said, no, no, yes. that was a misunderstanding. Yes. They, somebody, yeah, I know entirely. Lance Ulanoff, former editor-in-chief of PC Magazine, posted the invitation on Twitter, and everybody was all a Twitter about, oh, Oh, Apple's got a December 2nd event in New York. Oh, the best of 2019. <laughs> but this is kind of what they've done all, uh, for the last few years, right? Yeah, I, I said this on Twitter just because people were going nuts over it. They're like, where's the stream? Why isn't it up on Apple.com? Like, <laughs> Apple does like three trillion of these a year. Like they they have these all over the world. Uh, not not the Apple Awards, but they have, you know, small gatherings where they do specific things, developer meet and greets, things around different kinds of apps, different kinds of accessories all the time. This one just got posted on Twitter. Uh, and because it's your end awards and they had a fancy logo for it. It kind of took off and had a life on its own. And people were thinking, oh, my God, Apple's going to have new hardware at the end of the year. And no, no, I'm sorry. No. Yeah. And this <laughs> and this um, it, they did. Yeah, they didn't announce anything at all. Right. Except just the award winners. Just the award. And I was I was funny because there were people like like some of the the Apple sites were like st like staking it out. What's going to happen? Where are people? And meanwhile, <laughs> like like. Friends of ours are jetting to Hawaii for this huge Hong Kong, uh, Qualcomm summit, and all like everyone else is like, "What's happening in, in New York?" Like, no, nothing. Pay attention yep. elsewhere. It's fine. <laughs> Billie Eilish uh, took top honors, Global Artist of the Year, and I guess it's her reward because tomorrow at six thirty Pacific, six thirty p.m. Pacific, uh, they're going to live stream a performance at the Steve Jobs Theater. Um, wow. What a, what a great terrific. coincidence that they were able to like book this performer <laughs> after announcing <laughs> that they it would I have mean, been harder or, or, the, or if they that or later that, Andy or or that they happen he, that they happen to have this date free yeah and wow Pretty that's amazing. amazing yeah no it's hard to book an Apple Award winning artist you've got to book them before they win the Apple Award <laughs> well I I you know Sorry. you are a cynic like me Andy because I, I know I, I know and it I was hard for me not case, to I'm, note I'm, that sure. Billie Eilish was also on Saturday Night Live two weeks ago and. Maybe she's got an album just about to come. Oh, yeah, the full-length debut happens. album. Um, I just feel like this is kind of the music industry's well, awards the, the, as much as anything else. The right? music industry has gotten itself a little It's a little behind the... It can't quite figure out how to catch up now because both Billie Eilish and uh, Little Nas X, which is also listed there. Also winner. Both of them are... Well, both of them are TikTok stars, and they really got their launch much faster than the industry was oh, ready for. Oh, interesting. You know, like they, you yeah. know, their songs, you know, and it, even the song that, that really launched Eilish in a lot of ways was not what they had planned to put out. It just uh, happened to have a sample that people started dancing to. And so, so it, it uh, you know, so I think that they're, they're trying to kind of figure out how to, how to do that. You know. So the music awards uh, were also, uh, they did game awards as well and app mm -hmm. awards. So we'll do the music awards uh, first. Artist of the Year, Billie Eilish. Um, who evidently doesn't know who Van Halen is. Yeah, that was, uh, that was <laughs> going making the rounds yesterday. on Twitter. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but she's 12. How I mean, well, the funny thing is, is that <laughs> but Van Halen, the, then they asked Eddie Van Halen. He doesn't know Eddie who Van she Halen, is. No, Eddie Van Halen doesn't listen to music. That is the that was the craziest thing that came oh, out of man, some interview. I, he said, "I don't. I only listen to the music that I'm working on at that moment." He doesn't well, even listen to his old his old music. Like he he listens to what he's working on, and he said, "I find the other stuff." I said, "Sometimes he listens to Yo Yo Ma because he likes cellos," but outside of that, he literally uh, just thinks about what he's l playing, and he doesn't think actually, about anything else. I was it's thinking about that the other day. If I were a songwriter, I might not either, because. How hard is it not to accidentally repeat a riff that you, you stay heard? Pure, yeah. Leo. You have to stay pure. Yep. Did you did did you, have, did you have you seen The Mandalorian? Not yet. 
Yes. So listen to that theme. Sapphire? And then go back and listen to Rocky. Um, <clears throat> oh, jeez. No, no, no. Do this. Go, go back and listen to Rocky while he's working out or whatever. It's the, you know. Gonna fly listen to those now. Two, yeah. Go to Gonna those. fly now. Just listen to those two back and forth. <clears throat> and it turns out that the composer for The Mandalorian actually uh, worked on the last two Rocky films. Yeah. So it didn't come by an accident. Well, remember the Ghostbusters theme. Huey Lewis oh, in yeah. the news sued. <laughs> yeah. Right. And won. That was, a bl- that was like a, <clears throat> they, a was blatant, blatant. They asked. They asked them to to do that song, and when they turned it down, they hired. Uh, I, could, <laughs> I can't Parker remember Jr. the guy who who did it. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Ray Parker Jr. to make a song that sounded just like that. So, <laughs> you know, that also, was like an actual. Jo- George George Harrison and My Sweet Lord. Yeah, that's a classic one because you know George Harrison did not. Uh, intentionally do that, but of course he knew he's so fine. He's so fine. Well, da, the, 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 I think the, he knew. Da, you knew da, he, that da, da, as, a, da, da. as a teenager he heard that song many, many, many times. Yes. It was a huge hit, and then it was just in his head. And that's why I don't Minute. really blame Eddie Van Halen for not listening to music. But it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like he's doing it to protect himself. He just right. doesn't. He's just not interested. You know, it's just it's just a fascinating. Uh, hey, I don't listen to podcasts. Actually, I do. But, but I don't as much the as way, I should, probably. I'm in the business. There's but. an interview somewhere with Eddie Van Halen shot horribly, and the audio is, is mixed uh, mixed quality, but of him playing and how he got to w- what he does, it's amazing. Like, the content is amazing. The, the, the video is not. But the um, it's on YouTube somewhere, and it's uh, it you should watch it. It's, yeah. If you like Van Halen, it's amazing to watch him go. So uh, other uh, winners... Um, <clears throat> Uh, by the way, that's a picture of, for no reason, Billy's brother. He wrote one of the songs. Oh, he wrote, okay. <laughs> the song Finne- that wrote. Phineas. Uh, I agree with this one, Breakthrough Artist of the Year, Lizzo. Uh, I think what's clear is these all are new artists, all of them, right? Or newish artists, anyway. Uh, and, you know, I don't feel like there is a dearth of music industry awards. In fact, yeah. they point out... Uh, that Lizzo got eight Grammy nominations. So it's not like uh, she hasn't won her share uh, of awards. There's the AMAs, the Grammys, the music video awards. I mean, there's just an endless number I, of music industry awards. So. I do think that the online in- industry is about to start. I think we're going to see more of this where the online, and, and I'm not talking well, about Well, isn't just iTunes the music. number, I don't know if it still is, but for a long time, it was the number one music place people bought music. Like buy music, I think so. Yeah, buy buy and a large shot. Now I don't know if people even buy music anymore. But, but I think that online online retail, uh, whether it's video or audio, is about to assert itself because they're they're the biggest game in town now, and they're I think that they're tired. Like this whole I think we talked about this last week, but the we're not going to care about the Oscars in ten years. You know, that's going right. to there's going to be online awards yeah. that are we'll if if the Oscars don't embrace the online streaming. Uh, platforms, the pl- the platforms will build their own awards, and they're the only you know, and they're going to slowly push them off. I mean, they've already dropped twenty percent in view in uh, viewership. So the three awards we just did, which are Global Artist, Songwriter of the Year, and Breakthrough Artist of the Year, those are selected by the editorial team. Right. There are awards, two awards based on streaming data, which is a little less mm-hmm. subjective. And uh, the Song of the Year, the most played single on Apple Music, Little. Nas X's Old Town Road, which I admit I contributed five or six of those uh, plays. It's one of those songs, you it's so short, it's two minutes, you got to play five or six times just to get a normal length out of it. Right. And, <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's really... It's not to heaven. It's catchy. Yeah. It's catchy. Uh, they don't say if it was his version of Old Town Road or the one with Billy Ray Cyrus on it. Uh, well, so they're both his version. Yeah. You see, we... We, yeah. we make fun of Billy Ray Cyrus and his achy, breaky heart, but as the decades roll on, his influence just keeps getting well, greater and greater. He's, God's he's, like, he's the Rob power. Shankar is... of Marvin Martin. Mar- 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 <laughs> the evolution all the way back. That's actually been a model. Like, if you look at Despacito, there was like, I don't know, 10 versions of it with different yeah. stars. That's and what so they do the, now. The model, yeah. the model is bring those the kids names do in now. with this yeah. person. Is, <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's, you know, it's all marketing. Uh, one thing that is unique, I wish they'd called these the cookies. Okay, they don't. <laughs> but uh, one thing that is unique, they have these uh, awards are actually a silicon wafer. Yeah. That's pretty. That's They're really fab- pretty. Is it a very uh-huh. thin wafer? It's a 12-inch... It's wafer. The 12 inch wafer of silicon with nanometer level flatness. Uh, I'm sure Billy Eilish will appreciate that. 
Copper layers are deposited and patterned by ultraviolet lithography to create connections between billions of transmitters. Oh, transistors. shut up, Apple. <laughs> we don't care about your manufacturing. I know you're really pleased about your manufacturing processes, but how, how about you get someone to design something as iconic as an Emmy statue or as an Oscar statue? How about that? They don't they don't brag about and you know that the tolerances for the for the for the for the molecule display that the Emmy is holding is down to we don't care. It's just a really pretty statue, even if it meant nothing, which kind of it does, it would be a pretty object. I'm sorry. I'm Can I again. say one question? I have one question. Does Apple have a fab? No. So you, this isn't uh, even made by Apple. It's <laughs> made by TSMC like or somebody. <laughs> Is it a real fab? I mean, like it could just they could have just pressed found a machine and pressed it off. It could be made up. Um, this, though, for people who don't, I have uh, one of these wafers on my wall somewhere. I love these things. Actually, it's a home. Oh, yeah, they're very pretty. Yeah. I have some, too. Because what they do is they cut these up, and that's how you get the individual chips. And so they, they make hundreds of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On stage. But, but in order to make this, you have to have a fab. So Apple's waxing rhapsodical about somebody else's manufacturer. I just want to point that out. I wonder they're, they're, also, like they're, also, they're also they're also they're also about the well these of course were rejects that were that didn't oh, yeah. pass quality inspections yeah. that were not, of no use. Yep. <laughs> so that's the music awards. And I, I, I have to say it feels a little like a marketing ploy. By the way, I, I, oh well of course it is. I wouldn't but. be surprised if Apple had a small fab to do tests. I wouldn't you know like they might be able to actually produce that. Maybe. They have a CNC machine in, in Apple Park just to do fabs. Uh, we laser, we use our laser printer to make it. Uh, Apple They're celebrates the best apps and games of 2019. Now, this one may be a little bit uh, better, and I would guess these are based on, on downloads. Um, they are all uh, new newer apps. I think you knew this year. Best app of 2019. I think this is Apple editorial. It's not downloads. My, oh, really? My understanding is, this is yeah. these are Apple editorial picks. Okay. These are always fun. I was just checking to see, and it doesn't. Unfortunately, it doesn't say. This, uh, these are always good because they're they really are people who are at Apple who love well-made apps, trying to point out the my goodness, this person really did an amazing job. Uh, as often as not, it's not just oh, here was a really hot game that came out, but it's something like this interface is just so clean and so perfect and so elegant. I don't I don't care if you don't manage a bowling alley. This is just such a beautiful app for managing bowling alleys that you're going to want to download it and look at it. By the way, somebody in the chat room says, uh, if you want wheels on your Apple Award, that's 100 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> How many wheels? Stand. stand does not come, not included. So the app of the year for the iPhone, and I have to agree with this, I think that is from Lux Optics. They did Halide, which was probably last year's app of the year. Uh, their Spectre camera, which is their long exposure uh, app, is that's really, great. really good. Yeah. Ben Sanofsky uh, and Sebastian DeWitt. <clears throat> And we and we've not only talked about it, I you know many times made it a pick. I'm sure, uh, uh, at least once. So that's a that's a good choice. That's their uh, iPhone app of the year. Their iPad app of the year. I don't agree with, <laughs> but uh, it's the new uh, Flow drawing app from Moleskine. You know, this is a a very fat category. There's a lot of drawing apps. Yes. I think many better than this, uh, but uh, it's simple. I don't know. Anybody want to defend it? <clears throat> I don't know. It's, it's, either, but it's nice. It just them. didn't. It, it looks like a well-made like notebook app, of which there are several. Yeah. Um, I mean, gosh, there have been apps with you know pencils and markers and right. for years on the iPad. Right. Like, My daughter is mostly <coughs> Procreate. Procreate is a little more obviously yeah, uh, elaborate. Is fantastic. But yeah. So I don't know. I don't know why that got picked, but it did. Uh, I do think the app of the year for the Mac m probably deserves it. Affinity does some great... Uh, Serif Labs does some great stuff. Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo. I didn't even know He designed that they... the invitations. Did you notice that? He added oh, up on Twitter. He tweeted the picture of it. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. I had no Cards. idea that they did a desktop publishing app, Affinity I, I Publisher. I think the publishing app is... <clears throat> A better fit for them than the photo than the their image app. Well, that's what Serif did for years was uh, desktop publishing. Right, right. So this is not a new category for them. Yeah, I think it's also the, their the way that they approach uh, how they process is is better for publishing. Right. <laughs> the photo the photo <laughs> stuff is lacking a lot. Uh, oh, interesting. To Photoshop. Yeah. Well, I, I also find the UI on the iPad is is impenetrable. It's just so many little buttons. Uh, yeah. This may might make a better Mac app. I haven't really course, found photo is, editing on the on the iPad great yet. Uh, I mm, I like Pixelmator Photo and Dark Darkroom a lot. It depends on how, how much detail you're trying yeah. to get. I think well, I do it on my do, desktop when I need to do it. As an as an, I think yeah. I'm too old fashioned. And so even I, Photoshop on the iPad is disappointing. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lightroom is pretty good. 
I Lightroom's think that's fine uh, because not, I'm not trying to edit like alpha channels or transparency. No, right, in fact, exactly. the whole point like, of Lightroom yeah. is it's a front end to your desktop yeah. Lightroom, <laughs> so you can do right. the but, rejects but, yeah. and you can do right. you do the pics. No, I think that that works great. Yeah. I think when you're yeah. doing just basic photo correction, right, um, and some light editing, I think it, the iPad works great. I think if you're actually trying to do real heavy lifting, I think the they. They haven't, they Most haven't of these apps on yet. the iPad are probably doing what people who use Instagram want as opposed to what people That's like true. you want. They're doing social media sharing. Yep. yep. <clears throat> anyway, the Mac app of the year, Affinity Publisher from Serif Labs. Now, of course, this is a category Apple's owned since the Mac came out. Remember uh, PageMaker? And then Quark, yeah. and Quark, and I, you know, I'm, I spent a lot of years in Quark and a lot of money. <laughs> and, Same, and that's <laughs> the benefit. I didn't have to do that. That's, <laughs> that's some company. That's that the that's what Affinity, <laughs> uh, the Affinity series has done so well. That of course these are all very low cost. So yeah, no, relative it's, it's, to those. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the Apple TV app of the year, I'm not familiar with. Maybe you guys are the Explorers. I have actually not heard of this one. No, no yeah. me either. It looks me like either. it's a bunch of clips. Of the Earth, like uh, like if you took BBC Planet Earth and created uh, photos and clips of it. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't think I'm they're definitely going to check it out. Yeah, um, that's it. You know what? That's what the Apple TV is perfect for, right? It's beautiful yep. visuals <laughs> on your 4K HDR screen. The app trend of 2019. Um, this is very much like the kind of editorial you'd see in the App Store, anyway. Storytelling simplified. And they include Anchor, uh, the podcast app, which is excellent. Yep. Canva, Leah Culver, Unfold. Who did Leah Culver do Anchor? Yep. I had no idea. Yeah. I love <laughs> Leah Culver. She did Pounce. She's amazing. Remember Pounce, yes. the better yep. Twitter. Uh, she is Anchor. Yeah. I had no idea. I think she did OAuth too, didn't she? Or some part of the I OAuth hope she stack? made a lot of money when Spotify bought them. I hope she cashed in because that's. <laughs> uh, and I, at this point, you know, I've gone through many recommendations with people. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. She did Breaker, not Anchor. Oh, I'm getting confused this is with different. my clients. Yes. I apologize. Yes. I don't know what Breaker does. What does Breaker do? Break, Breaker is a podcasting client that tries to do the sort of social matching that a YouTube ah. recommendation timeline would do. Oh, I got it. Anchor is for actually making podcasts. Yes. They store it, they make it for free. Uh, Spotify owns it, and when people uh, who ask me how to do how do I get my podcast, which people have been asking me for 15 years, my my answers have changed over the years, but now it's very clearly, very simply, Anchor. Uh, it's an amazing app uh, on iPhone or uh, iPad, or I don't think that yes, you can do it on the desktop too. That just makes it so easy, and it'll do your you know your RSS automatically. It'll I mean it's just amazing. Canva Stories and Video Maker. Unfold by Unfold Creative. I'm not familiar with that one. Stellar, Spark Camera, Over, and Wattpad. <clears throat> These are all designed to, to make your stories simpler, whether they're audio, uh, text, or photos. I'm going to have to try all of these. I'm not familiar with some of them. I am familiar with the best game of the year on the iPhone, Sky, Children yeah. of the Light. That's a beautiful game. I think that deserves uh, mm -hmm. credit. Although there's so many to choose from. I, I almost think that games should be really their own creative category because there are things you can do. There, there's, there are fewer, so much fewer creative limitations. You really are starting with an absolute blank canvas when you're writing a game, whereas when you're trying to write a desktop publishing app or a photo editing app, there's at some point you have to figure out how do we do a selection and how do we do brightness and contrast. Whereas when you see the games give you the possibility of, I had no idea this world was even possible. I had no idea that this way of interacting with other apparently thinking and talking creatures Creatures was even possible and after three hours i am left rethinking a lot of my attitudes about life and reality this is I, this is why i think there should be like an entire game separate uh, award for uh, a se separate kind of award separate day with multiple categories because it's I, i've i've never been as impressed with the creativity of another programmer so much as when i have just been had my breath taken away by an amazing game I'm, i was kind of i've been kind of amazed by apple arcade my son plays I got I got it just tested and I didn't play very many of them but my son just played all of them. Interesting. And, and he and loves them. And he's uh, does but he stick with Minecraft. one game or is he? <laughs> yeah, that's like, like he, he he went and he still plays them. Right. There, but there was like three three weeks of him playing and he still when the new ones come out he goes and plays that's them. That's kind of my. Then he goes I don't have a Minecraft. problem with it for five bucks a month is well worth it but it, yeah, that is yeah. kind of the issue I have with it is none of the games really 
keep me for more than a day or two. They're not yeah. the game you keep going back to again and again. At least not, I haven't found one. I they, found them very creative. To get, to they're good. Point. They're, oh, they're I'm amazing. glad Apple's doing it. Yeah. And, you know, maybe that game is, is already out because I haven't been able to play them all, and maybe it will come out. They did have a separate category, which I, I give Apple credit for, uh, so that they at least have two game <laughs> categories. Uh, but before we get to it, the iPad game of the year, Hyper Light Drifter from Abbey Light. I don't know this game. It's a 16-bit adventure game. I am not a 16-bit fan, but the kids no, love it. Really. <laughs> the kids yeah, love it. because they like Minecraft. Yeah, maybe that's it. <laughs> it's like, oh, it looks like Minecraft. I can they play they, that. It looks like Grandpa's game. <laughs> Me being Grandpa. And then uh, the Mac game of the year, which I also don't know, Gree or Gris, I'm not sure which. A soul-stirring work of digital art, one that explores hope, grief, and and the triumph of piecing a life back together after tragic loss. Oh, that sounds like barrels of fun. I can't remember the last time I played a game. <laughs> well, but that's but that's that's exactly the sort of emotional connection that right. in the early days you never would have imagined that uh, that a game could evoke in you. This is this is this is why it was so difficult to have a discussion about whether games are art like five or ten years ago because you really weren't seeing games like right. this the ones that, that would just leave you emotionally wrecked right. in a very positive way at the end of it yep. and that's such a great statement for the evolution of games and game makers i i agree i agree uh finally the uh apple tv game of the year wonder boy the dragon's trap <laughs> looks like a platformer uh, Developed by Lizard Cube with the cooperation of series creator Ryuchi Nishizawa, Wonder Boy, the beloved game from the 80s, in which a lone half-lizard adventurer sets off on the challenge of a lifetime, gets a reboot with hand-drawn animation and a reorchestrated soundtrack. So it's a big nostalgia play for some of you. Um, and then here's the Apple... Nope, sorry. Before we get to the arcade game of the year, the trend of the year, Blockbusters Reimagined. And that has something to do with Nintendo putting Mario Kart and Dr. Mario on uh, on the uh, iPhone. Minecraft Earth, that's the new one for Microsoft. Really interesting. Pokemon Masters, Assassin's Creed Rebellion, The Elder Scrolls, Blades, Alien Blackout, Car of Call of Duty Mobile. Basically, it's AAA games uh, in a portable format. The Arcade Game of the Year, they did give a separate category for Arcade, and it was Sayonara Wild Hearts, which is a really... Wonderful game. Great soundtrack. It's kind of... The gameplay itself is not unique, but uh, it's, a, it's a fun game. <laughs> it's got a nice little storyline. And no, there's no tragic life experiences <laughs> involved. But <laughs> Sometimes you just want something to blow up. Sometimes you yep. want to be neck deep in the feels. So there you have it. There is Apple's... Uh, there, there are Apple's awards... And don't forget, tomorrow you can watch Billie Eilish, uh, 6.30 p.m. Pacific. I guess Apple will stream that on their website. And maybe YouTube as well. I don't know. Uh, we're going to take a break, come back with more. But first, a word from our sponsor. It's my app pick of the, of the week, of the year. I certainly had, when I traveled, it was definitely front and center on my iPad and my iPhone. I'm talking about ExpressVPN. Don't leave home without it, as they used to say. In fact, they should hire Carl or Malden to do their uh, their ads. You know you need a VPN when you're on an open Wi-Fi network, a network you don't control. A virtual private network protects your security by taking all the traffic coming off of your phone, your tablet, your computer, encrypting it, and sending it through that encrypted tunnel to the server, the VPN server. So that protects your privacy. No hacker sitting in the coffee shop or in the hotel can see what you're doing. That's awesome. And also protects your privacy because, in fact, a lot of people use VPNs even at home because your ISP or your carrier can't see what you're doing either. And that's nice because we now know that many ISPs and many carriers sell that information to advertisers and others. So VPNs are even more popular now than ever before for both privacy and security. There's a third reason, and a lot of people choose to use uh, ExpressVPN, because it eliminates geographic restrictions. It could take your TV watching to the next level by unlocking movies and shows that are only available in other countries. So you can use ExpressVPN to binge on Doctor Who or Star Trek on the UK Netflix. Yeah, they have it. Just fire up the ExpressVPN app. In fact, I'll show you how you do it. It's, it's pretty easy. I've got it on my uh, iPhone here. 
So when you tap the button, and one of the things I love about ExpressVPN, it's on every single device you have, uh, you know, iPhone, Android, Mac, Windows, uh, Linux. You, you could just press the start button. It'll just connect you to the nearest server. That's the smart location here is San Francisco. But as I traveled around, maybe, you know, I wanted to watch uh, American television while I'm in Dubai. Well, you can do that. You can choose other locations. These are the recommended locations. But ExpressVPN has hundreds of servers all over the world. So there's no limit to the places you can emerge on the Internet. And that's awesome. You could choose from almost 100 different countries. Think about all the Netflix libraries you could you could go through. If you love anime, you can express, use ExpressVPN to ac access Japan, the uh, Japanese Netflix and be spirited away, as they say. ExpressVPN works with any streaming service, not just Netflix, Hulu, BBC, iPlayer, YouTube, you name it. There are many VPNs out there. Only one protects your privacy, protects your security, doesn't log and lets you watch shows ridiculously quickly. No buffering or lag. Stream in HD on ExpressVPN. Compatible with everything you've got, including media consoles and smart TVs. If you want to get a deal on ExpressVPN right now, I, I suggest you go to expressvpn.com slash MacBreak. You subscribe for a year, you'll get an extra three months. So that's like 25% off. Expressvpn.com slash Mac break. Please use that URL. That way uh, they, they know you saw it here, and that gives us credit. It gives you some uh, extra credit, too. Three months free with a year package. Protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash Mac break. Do you want my, my VPN tip? What's your VPN tip? NFL, the NFL app is not blocked in India. <laughs> that was the hardest thing. We were in Dubai, and I was trying to watch the 49ers. Yeah, so... So the, the thing That's is, a good is that, tip. I'll have to remember that one. I signed up for it in the U.S. and half the Steeler games were, were blocked. Yeah. And then I I happened to be in India for one of the games and I signed up to watch it there, like a little test, whatever. And I suddenly realized, oh my gosh, they're not there. So now if I if the Steelers aren't playing on something that YouTube TV has or whatever, you know, you just log into Delhi. Smart. It's you know. But See, you have to Don and Deb, you'll be able to watch your you're Steelers. You're still paying the NFL for it. You're you're still paying for. Oh, the, they get the their service. They get their value. Don't worry. You're watching the ads. You're not skipping the. No, ads. no, I'm paying for it. Like yeah. I'm paying for the NFL pass. Oh yeah. But it just means that's that so weird that the NFL pass also blocks you. Yeah, that's the whole point. I was that's like, crazy. I paid, I paid like a hundred dollars for this, that's and I'm not crazy. getting, and I'm not getting to actually watch the team yeah. that I wanted to watch. This is BS. Yes. I hate that. ExpressVPN.com slash Mac break. Anyway. I have it on all my devices. Sorry, I And it really saved it. us. Just press the button. You're on. Yep. Boom. Steelers fans here, by the way. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We were talking earlier. You know, Don designs aircraft carriers. <laughs> he does fluid dynamics. Is that wild? Oh, wow. Yeah, fluid dynamics. I don't even know how dynamic my fluids are, but I know he knows. I have a cousin that does fluid, fluid really? dynamics. Yeah. You know, he's a small world. He's uh, It's kind of like what you do. It's related, sort of. Uh, it's way higher than it's what It's a lot of physics. It's way smarter yeah. than the things that I do. I, <laughs> I, I think about those things. I don't actually <laughs> If you were going to do, you know, some beautiful water in your video game, you need fluid dynamics. Oh, yeah. We do a lot of that, but somebody else figured it out. Yeah. I just go, I have a plane. There's physics engines. I do. I, I put, I drop a plane and then I put water. water. There. Yeah. <laughs> How viscous like, would you like it to be? This is amazing. I have a little sliders and everything else. That's not the real math. Um, speaking of maps... I don't know how I feel about this one. I, so depending on where you are, your Apple Maps may or may not show Crimea as a part of Russia. Crimea is not a part of Russia. It's a disputed territory that Russia invaded a few years ago, part of Ukraine that was annexed by Russia in 2014. Um, Google Maps has done this for some time. Apple changed its maps. If you're in Russia to show Crimea as part of Russian uh, territory. This is more of that kind of I think the, the, the same thing. Weather does the same thing, by the way, if you're in, in Russia. Doesn't Google doesn't Google Maps list that as disputed as opposed to... Oh, does it? Some I, maps well, BBC do... BBC originally reported that, and then without any form of correction that I can find in the article, changed it to what it currently says. Oh, uh, okay. Um, they do some some yeah. maps do a uh, a dotted line, which is supposed to say this is. And if you're uh, outside Russia, it shows it to you differently than if you're inside Russia. See, that's the real thing. 
And, uh, you know, you're going to see this with Taiwan. You're going to see this with Hong Kong. You're going to, well, Hong Kong now is officially China, but. Um, Japanese, Russian I, islands, Kashmir, I think there's so yeah. many places. I think yeah. the, the difference is, is that Apple had an opportunity. The timing is bad because Apple had the opportunity to take, take a high, uh, take the high road on this one because Russia is going to be a dead market for them anyway, because Russia is going to require everybody to put on uh, Russian apps. Does that it, mean which, that you can't have yep. an iPhone though? Yeah, it's going to mean that. It, well, it's, it's going to be it's a gray market. That. It'll go gray market. Yeah, and so the the whole thing. Is, so Apple's going to lose this market anyway, and so they could have just said, "Screw you," <laughs> you know, like, like you know, like we're not gonna we're not gonna change that. You can take our take our phones because it's not that large of a market for yeah Apple anyway. So so not Russia's like China. part China is a much more complicated thing because it's a huge part of Apple's income. Yeah, so it is. So yeah, but Russia's not. So they could take the high road, but then it would then you would really say, well, why aren't you taking the high road with China? Mm. And then it gets complicated. So yep. it's a little easier to say if you're Tim Cook, well, we adhere to the laws of the country we're in, right. and in this country, that's I don't know if it's a law, but it's so Russia's parliament voted that every smartphone, computer, and television sold in the country, uh, starting in July, will have to have Russian alternatives alongside the preferred options. So if you bought a phone that had Google Chrome or Apple Safari on it, there would have to be a Russian browser. I won't be I wouldn't be surprised if, if the, the one reason Apple should hang on to this is there's gonna be a huge spike in purchases of iPhones up until July. I don't see this actually as a problem. I feel like I mean, they're afraid it's going to be it's, spyware. There's going to be some spyware embedded in it that's going to allow tracking of everybody on everything. Also, if, also if they've established a legal precedent that the contents of the phone are subject to uh, demands from the government, then that's one step away from them saying, by the way, Apple, you're going to create for us a new version of iOS that has these hooks built into it that our agencies can then tap into. Yeah, but as soon will. as you take the Crimea and give it to Russia on your Maps app, you are doing that. Well, that may be a smaller a much, step, but it's a step, step in that that's, direction. That's, that's not the same thing, but it's well, a, you're changing a, a, you're changing your app to accommodate Russian law. It is. I will say these are two. We're we're talking about two different stories here. One, but again, this law that says that you after July you have to have Russian uh, localized Russian. Excuse me, not localized, but local Russian apps. Uh, that have to be pre-installed on the phone. Uh, but what we're talking about, the uh, uh, changing the designation of Crimea from an independent state to something that has been... No, I agree. In say, degree, it's but, also say, less than changing but it's, iOS. It's, it's, but it's, it's, it's a, a more, step it's a, it's in that more, direction. It's it's a more complicated thing. I've been tr I've, since last week's uh, story. I've been trying to understand how cartographers deal with this issue, and even cartographers say that it's a dicey it's thing. Tricky. We don't know. We yeah. don't. We know. It's is there, there's one one way is to simply say this is disputed territory and have a different sort of uh, uh, dotted line around the territory, but that's sort of wimping out because you have to figure out. If someone says that, if, if what what is what is going to be the common understanding of the nationality of this region? And sometimes you, they, one of them said that sometimes you really do have to turn off the social justice part of your head that this is not right, but this is now, by all intents and purposes, a region that belongs to Russia. So we will now have to designate this as part of a Russian well, territory. And this it's is not, what so there's no there's no standard. That's this what is saying. what the author of the Russian bill, Oleg Nikolaev, said. And that sounds reasonable to me. When we buy complex electronic devices, they already have individual applications, mostly Western ones, pre-installed on them. Naturally, when a person sees them, they might think there are no domestic alternatives available. And if, alongside pre-installed applications, we will also offer the Russians one, the Russian ones to users, they'll have the right to choose. I don't think that's unreasonable. I could see us passing a similar law. If we had well, if phones... If, Honestly, if all Canadian the phones... Canadian content on TV? <laughs> yeah, Canadian content on TV, which is a law <laughs> the new, the in the CCRTC. Yeah. It, it did give us... If all of, it hold on, let me Doug talk McKenzie. for five seconds. If all, of our, if all of our phones were made in Russia, uh, I would... Uh, I think it would... You know, what if Russia were this big I manufacturer of smartphones? Like, that's where they all came from. They used to all come from Finland. And, <laughs> and, and they come to the United States, and they have Russian browsers and Russian map apps and so forth. I don't think it'd be unreasonable for the United States government to say, well, we would love, we would insist that you install American versions of those same apps so people have the choice. That doesn't seem unreasonable. 
Well, it's not American versions of these same apps. It's uh, it's Amer it's it's Russian alternatives to these apps. And again, the requirement that you put these apps on every single phone. And there's the other problem here of uh, it's uh, think about how many of these phones are obviously going to be Android phones. And imagine that you've got a calculator app that has to be installed, but it has every permission amaz uh, imaginable on your phone automatically set for you. That it can it can take it can open your camera, it can look at your text message. It can look at it has access to data storage, all this sort of stuff. And what if that is exploited as a backdoor so that when you cross a border, and I'm talking about a town border, not a national border, so that they can plug in this into this thing into a device and get access to everything that you want in a in a nation that has been working to create its own private Russian internet uh, that uh, that uh, makes it really can make it really really difficult to access any service outside the outside of Russian uh, 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 Russian control. This is something that is to be concerned about. And I think that if that was something that was proposed in the United States, that the government insists that the following 12 apps be installed on every single phone, we have a, we, we have a history of not liking government to tell us something, uh, tell us we, something we have to have on our phones, even when they tell us that we have to have our seat, our seat belts buckled. Uh, so I don't think that would go over well in the United States. I think it's, it's a biased point of view to say, oh, the Russians spy on their people, but the Americans don't, because we do. No, they, so, they, they certainly do. But so, uh, again, so hold on, regime, wait a minute. Okay, go ahead. So I think it's it's it is it's I think this point of view is kind of uh, um, uh, that Eurocentric point of view. Well, these other countries, they don't have freedoms, they don't have rights. So it's okay if we send our phones to them, and they better not change them. I think is a little bit um, maybe not. Put yourself in their position. I think it. I think it'll. I mean, we're assuming they're doing it so they can spy on people. Maybe they're just doing it because, from an economic point of view, they want everybody to know Russia makes. Very, they said they want to the, promote local developers. By the way, Russian developers are very good, and you believe it or not, have a lot of Russian uh, programs on your phones already. Right now, uh, all they can do is hack other people. I mean, they're, they're, that's that's where the big, big businesses. No, are, there's the, you know workers. what? Uh, my favorite photo editing software comes out of Ukraine. Is Skylum. No, it I, comes the out of Eastern Ukraine. Eastern European. Uh, some of the best programmers some in of the, the world. Best, best in the world. They're so incredible. I don't think it's. I mean, the spying issue you're going to have to take out of the equation because if you don't think Chrome is spyware, you're not paying attention. <laughs> so I'm. No, it's it's not. <laughs> uh, but what I'm getting what I'm getting that is though China has regulations that make it extremely difficult to create a search engine uh, from the West or a chat app from the West that will pass muster with local uh, with local rules. They don't make it a requirement that there be a government approved chat app on every single phone. That's the difference here. India requires their f the phones sold in India are made in India. Brazil requires that phones sold in uh, Brazil are made in Brazil. Uh, this is the world we live in. By the way, that may backfire because we're now learning that Huawei, which has been blocked in the United States and can't buy U.S. components, now makes their phones without any help from American companies. Is that, yep. is that a benefit or a detriment to those American companies? So uh, I think you could, make there's a, you could say there's an economic disincentive to do this, but I think it's a little American-centric to say, oh, well, we do it right, and those Ruskies, you can't trust them. No, it's not the Ruskies I don't trust. It's Putin I don't, I don't trust. And you trust a lot Mr. Of this Trump. Journal journalists disappear <laughs> who write bad things about Russia, and that's all I'm going to say. That'll probably happen in the U.S. any day now. <laughs> you know, Khashoggi was a Washington Post journalist murdered by the Saudi Arabians. We looked the other way. I I don't think we're so far off. We we didn't. It's a, it's a uh, very our, our righteous did. it's a very righteous point of view, and I don't I think I'm just trying to put myself in the Russian okay in the in the in the mindset of the Russians. It's a righteous point of view to assume oh they're doing it for bad reasons. We do it for good reasons. I'm not I'm not assuming. I'm well, just the, simply the noting question, that for future it's a data point for future consideration. I think the, the question is, is would, would an average brand. Russian citizen prefer to have an Apple OS or a Russian OS when they buy the phone? I don't know. The Chinese government's creating their own OS. Go ahead, uh, Rene. It could also be a middle ground where um, Apple, I think what Apple's pushing back against is the idea that governments will tell them what is and what isn't on the apps uh, installed on the phones. And they already have to do that. For example, in some Middle Eastern countries, they can't have Face ID, uh, sorry, FaceTime on some phones. And in other places, there's you know they, they have to always figure out which apps are allowed and which aren't. But they don't want to start 
I'm going to make an awful Verizon bloatware sort of a joke here, which is <laughs> terrible. But they, they don't want other people to start telling them what apps have to be on it. But there could be a middle ground where when you buy the new phone and you turn it on and it detects that you're in Russia and it's set to Russia, it automatically downloads the Russian pack of apps from the app store. And then, you know, that's, it's not Apple having to, and maybe this is a distinction without a difference. I don't know, but it's not Apple or any other company having to install apps that are dictated by a government, but it's Apple providing those apps as a, as an automatic download when you, when you this sign is up a, for the This phone. is a big issue and it's not a new issue. Remember uh, that Microsoft got in trouble in the European Union uh, because they didn't, they only included Internet Explorer as the browser and they were forced to put a browser ballot on all installs oh, what were the of names? Windows, Sleipnir, and Sleipnir which is a, which is a, <laughs> I think a Finnish, it's a Scandinavian browser, um, with a number of European browsers uh, on the list. I, I'm not sure. I think this is a bad. I, I understand why countries are provincial in this regard. Um, it's provincial. It's provincialism, but especially if your if your alphabet is different, uh, I don't think it's un, it's a complete. It's I understand it. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I understand it. Well, I think that I think all governments are a little afraid of the fact that their citizens can uh, coordinate quickly. <laughs> I, mean, I think that yeah, I mean, we, no, we, when we look at like when they shut them off, when they shut the internet off in Iran, and they shut the internet, like they understand. Like everyone looks at a the Asia, the the app or the um, Arab Spring, and realize that when people can, when people are upset, you know, and they can organize quickly. It's it's problematic for the you, government. You do make, and so they're they're trying they're doing their best they can to make sure that they can control that. And and Russia and yeah. China ha, you know use force more than many other countries to keep their citizens in line. We and, use and force so, to keep other countries' citizens. Yeah, yeah, in yeah line. absolutely. I'm okay. not saying I'm not saying I mean, I'm, also, I'm, not, I'm not. We're the ones with the cruise missiles going out. There, there's randomly. also a bigger danger here. It's that when it when it's Russia and China, we just feel automatically like yes, you have to fight back. Like we've cast right. them as evil empires, They're the commies. as menaces for years. But now France is doing like data localization and repatriation. Australia is doing anti-encryption laws. Right. It's when the country. It's, it's like when Canada or like New Zealand starts doing it. You don't have the moral argument anymore. You just have to start under like trying to figure out why we're getting so provincial in a world that's becoming less and less about where we're located but you make a great point Renee, because the uh here in the united states it doesn't happen on the iphone because they have enough cloud but on any android phone if you buy it from a uh, verizon it's got a ton of red apps pre-installed yeah. it's got all right. so in america we don't the government doesn't do it companies do it right. uh, you know corporations do it you buy a phone from verizon i'm gonna junk it up with a ton of stuff i don't you, you know nfl and all well, and sorts that's, of and stuff that's why apple want. had to shop from one uh right cell provider to another to, to get someone to to sell the iphone and it's or, one or reason to buy an iphone in the united states because you don't have corporate you know yeah. we you may say it's not spyware but i gotta think those verizon apps telegraph my location back home uh to the it's all telemetry leo yeah i mean i it's not government spyware <laughs> okay <laughs> I have I feel it, so long as so long as I have the 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 ability to choose to not buy a Verizon phone, so long as I have the ability and the freedom to not choose to use the Chrome browser, to use a browser that's been specifically designed to foil any attempts to track, that's perfectly fine. And I and I and Renee is absolutely right. This is not a Chinese problem. This is not a Russian problem. This is a human rights problem. And you should uh, I. Uh, for reasons and motivations that uh, would hijack this entire show for two more hours, so I won't go into them, I do feel as though for me it's a human, it's an international human rights problem and something that I care deeply about, no matter where it where it pops up. So when I see a regime like Putin's uh, doing something that in any other country I would say, well, that's not ideal, but oh well. Again, uh, this is where I feel as though the thermometer has just risen another five degrees yeah. in the human rights situation inside Russia. This is a, a lot of. I'm, 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 I, will, I promise this will be on my last sentence that I speak about this, but. Uh, you don't. It's not as though you have tanks and missiles and armed people, armed militia on every single street corner to keep people in line happening overnight. It's little pieces yes. being put into position so that when the time comes that someone wants to push a switch or pull a switch, that switch can be pulled and boom, it's lights out for human rights. And I'm guessing that's my concern. Well, and based on your last name, that maybe your people had some. <laughs> Some bad experiences. There were, there were, there were, there were reasons why, why, why the Anakos are in the decided, U.S. Decided to leave in a hurry. Yes. Yeah. And, and there's, there's a lot of people like that. So. Yeah, there are a lot of people like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I think that the other thing is, is that when you look at building an internet that you can turn off, it's it's also so that it allows you to be offensive. 
So you know, if you can, if you have a steady defense, I mean, our country could do things to to Russia that it chooses not to. Um, and so Russia's, as much as anything else, it's a missile defense system. You know, them being able to turn off their their external connections to the internet yeah. is them preparing for being more offensive than they already sure. have been. What's the first thing you and do in a coup? You shut down the newspapers, radio stations. Well, but I'm not even talking about stations. internal. If they want to internet. attack, if they want to attack the U.S. or other in, in a higher level than they already have online, the first thing that they would do is make sure that they can defend themselves. Yeah, you know, and so. Them building up these defenses and, and hardening their their defenses has nothing yeah. has less to do with their own people and more to do with what they want to project in the future. P Putin is probably the smartest politician in the world right now, you know, and he has he has stirred up all of this stuff on you know using you know the internet <laughs> uh, between you know all he has done a good job of weaponizing the internet has he not he probably yeah. better than any yeah. one ever yeah yeah and ironically using American companies to do it yep. uh, in many cases. <laughs> So, uh, all right. Well, I think Apple will walk away. Really? Yep. You think they say you cannot do that in and July? I mean, they don't have to make a decision right now. No. But I think they're, they're not going to, because this is, I think that Apple's willing to give a lot. Um, but I think that, that where they stop giving is, is actual con access to the phone. And that's, that's where they've drawn the line in the U.S. That's where they've drawn the line in a lot of places. That They might put their iCloud server somewhere. They might move Crimea's uh, lines, but... The line so far that Apple hasn't, because once Apple gives that line up to Russia, then they'll lose it to problem. the FBI, they'll lose yep. it to China, they'll lose it, they'll lose it to everyone. So I think they're going to have to make that statement that says, "Yeah, you can't." Let's watch. Yep. We'll watch with interest. Come <laughs> July first. I don't know how they they it, it it pulls a string out of a out of a sweater that would be very hard to put back in. Yeah, that was my thought. Is that if they do that, then they have to really I don't start. Think they can. But they, there's no yeah. The FBI will come down on them immediately, wanting to have access to the phone. Right. Hey, you gave it to the Russians. Exactly. Yep. Why don't we have that was our in Tim apps Cook's interview? He said that uh, China had never asked for the contents of an iPhone, and the U.S. asked for it all the time, yep. which was an interesting yep. line <laughs> for this thing. Uh, by the, I mean, it's a separate story, but China is getting very aggressive in its use of uh, smartphone technology and uh, face recognition, and a lot of it is to uh, suppress the Muslim uh, minority Uyghurs. Uh, they have introduced now mandatory face recognition for mobile phone users. Uh, if you're registering a new SIM card, you've got to do a face scan. That face data gets sent, of course, uh, to the Chinese government. The guidelines require telecom companies to deploy artificial intelligence and other technical methods to check the identities of people registering SIM cards. Uh the idea, they say, is to protect the legitimate rights and interests of citizens in cyberspace. But, of course, it makes any mobile phone owner uh, easier to track, especially in a country where you have cameras uh, in, in public everywhere. Uh, if I have your face data, I now know who you are and where you are and what you're doing at almost all the time you're I'll, in public. I'll argue that we, we just... We try to be more subtle in the West. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think that, that was my argument right. earlier. But yeah, okay. no, I'm, I'm, like the, I mean, if, if you're in the UK, I mean, you, yeah, you, there's cameras everywhere. But what they don't do in the UK is say, "Hey, you want a SIM card? Give us your face data." Yeah, they just take it. It's as if they went and fingerprinted know, but, everybody in the country. Yeah, you know where else you can fingerprint everybody in the country? DMV, AM, uh, ATM, in an ATM. How do you do that? Use the camera, and, and you're punching your keys in. You're identifying who fingers. you are. No, no, they don't oh, need they to see got your fingers. Your they have. They know yeah. what you. You just put your card in. You well, told them who you a are. A related story. Uh, it looks much like less paranoid than it sounds. If you enter the country right now, if you enter the country, the uh, the border patrol does not use face recognition. If you're a U.S. citizen or a green card holder, that seems to be about to change. Mm -hmm. They're going to start collecting face recognition uh, imagery from every single person who enters the United States. So you're right. We're in a way we're kind of nibbling away at the edges of collecting all that data. Well, I remember I was trying to pass through customs. It was uh, right after the iPhone 10 was announced and I went through and they said, why are you coming here? And I said, I'm going to, I'm coming back from Apple's event. And the guy said, oh great, they're destroying our privacy, making a database of everybody's faces. And I little, like 10 feet away from him, I just scanned my irises into yeah. what I assume was an Equifax database. And that's fine. Like, he's been seeing people do that all day, every day for a decade, but you know, suddenly it's on a phone and that's the end of our privacy. Yeah. We've been doing facial recognition for a long time. And we also... <laughs> like it's like, but, this is not, there's nothing new about what we're talking about here. This is 20, 25 years old. Alex, you were kind of talking about how we do it subtly here. I think that's pretty, pretty dead on in that 
uh, we we accept these kinds of um, privacy invasions, if you will, um, in exchange for some kind of convenient thing. So we're giving it away. It's not being demanded well, of us. We're just giving it away. And as long as these these companies continue to kind of um, dangle that carrot for us, we're going to just keep. Yeah. Okay. You know, do this, do that, and then we're giving things away for convenience and in exchange. And these they're they're kind of being um, controlled by the companies, but that doesn't mean that they won't hand this stuff over to the government if ever asked. And they're collecting all the data, and all it takes is just a phone call, um, you know, a request from the government or demand from the government, and the, our facial recognition and all that is it's going to them. And we're the ones who gave it away instead of it being sort of forced upon us. It's subtle, just like you were saying. Well, it's, it's subtle because you you. I mean, if people knew what the risks were to the United States, they wouldn't go outside. But there, but it, but at the same time, it's the safest it's ever been. I mean, you you are the safest you've ever been in the United States. Now, the crime rates have dropped. The you know, all of those things are better than they've ever been, and and a lot of it has to do with that data collection. So you know, there's a other side of it that we like we like the fact that we don't. I mean, I work in countries where everybody's got a wall with broken glass across the top and a security guard at every house, and you know, so it it can be a lot different. You know, and we are the target of a lot of. It does People. tend to be the safest it, places are the most authoritarian. So I, if you go to Dubai, it's very, very safe. You go to Singapore, it's very, very safe. But it, it is at a cost of personal freedom. And here, it's just that we data collect a lot. You know? and, and well, we manage it. See, what's really interesting is uh, that technology, it's, it's the data collection plus what you do with it. And the technology is making it really far easier to take all these data points and well, create stews of information that can be used in ways that we didn't really anticipate or Well, and a lot of times the, the hooks are, you know, like the reason that the metadata was so important for so long for the NSA is that, you know, if you do a terrorist act in the United States, if we're collecting all that metadata of everybody, we can go back to before you even thought about being a terrorist. Yeah. And then we can see who are you talking to at that point? <laughs> and who are they talking to? Right. And who are they talking to? Right. And who are they talking to? And so the thing is, is that the ability to kind of hoover up, you know, every time someone shows up as a terrorist, either a, an idea of a terrorist or start posting angry things on Facebook, you go back in time and you start, you just collect this huge web of people that are connected to that. And, you know, then, then you just start watching them. <laughs> like, like, you know, it's, it's that, I mean, that's how this, that's how this works. And, and, be, and many people get picked up before they actually execute. We just, but the, if we told everybody that we were doing that, then we would, uh, it's it would interesting people. Because this is exactly what Edward Snowden talks about in his new book, which is called Permanent Record. Mm -hmm. And he says, we're, you know, the NSA decided at some point, we may not be able to crack every uh, trans transmission, but we're going to collect them all anyway. Right. And we just have to build a big enough storage facility to store everything. And at some point when we can read it, at least we'll have the metadata, we'll be able to. And, well, and basic going metadata, on in the US they don't right need now. to listen to every every call. They just need to know who's talking who to you who. Talking and, to. and that's not yeah. encrypted. Right. You know, like like who you called and who you talked to and everything else isn't encrypted. Um, I think there's never been a better time for this commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Calm. <laughs> Calm. <laughs> Calm, <laughs> calm. We need this badly. Calm is a the number one app to reduce stress, to relax your mind, to help you sleep. Sleep is really important. You, you, uh, every day of the year, but around the holidays, it's hard to find a time for those precious sleep hours. You got parties with friends and family. Our twit Christmas party's coming up Thursday. Lori's going to be there for our special uh, episode of Twit. Uh, you, it's so. I bet you'll get some less sleep that night. Uh, endless shopping lists. You've got work to do, places to go, people to see. And, of course, the worst thing, flying anywhere. Bad for your sleep. When you finally get into bed, you want to make sure you'll fall asleep and stay asleep. And that's why I love Calm, the number one app for sleep and relaxation. It can transform your nights, which means better days. Check out Sleep Stories. They call, I'm going to run to Calm.com right now. I have a premium subscription I have for years. I love calm but let me show you the new sleep story you'll be very pleased when you go to your homepage on calm.com to see there is a new sleep story from one of my favorite people of all time now i've called her eva green forever but it turns out here listen to her well hello hello and welcome hi my name is evergreen oh my god she's evergreen did you know that I feel so calm now. And this... This is her sleep story. Is nightfall. It's called Nightfall. Now imagine 
You put this on. It was on. the end of the week, in the middle of the spring, You're listening to the beautiful and the night evergreen. was about to begin. You've got peaceful mountain lake. I stepped outside, and the front door clipped itself closed. No, wait a minute. I can't keep playing this because you're going to fall asleep. Please. Stop. You've got to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep <laughs> stories are just the beginning. Matthew McConaughey, Stephen Fry, uh, people from uh, all walks of life. How about Nick Hello Offerman? There. Hello. My name's Nick Offerman. Nick Offerman. And yes, tonight, yes. I'd like to tell you a fine tale about a familiar storybook character. But before we get started... It's called The Big Bad Wolf Learns Anger Management. The problem, if they make this too funny, I'm gonna wake. I'm gonna wake up. These are so amazingly calming and relaxing, and and I just I just love them. Jerome Flynn, the sellsword from Game of Thrones, reading about his sacred New Zealand. It's, it's so great. I just love calm.com. But that's not all. There's meditations, guided meditations. There's a daily meditation, Tamara. Levitt does Welcome one every day. To the Daily Calm. A new one every day. I'm Tamara Levitt. And today we'll explore our tendency towards self competition. Oh, I got to listen to that one. There's great music. In fact, there's music from some of the biggest names, like Cigar Ross's new album is on here, remixed for deep sleep and relaxation. Oh, Moby released his latest album exclusively on calm.com. There's master classes. In many different areas, including parenting, gratitude, peak performance, mindful eating. There's stretch classes, the evening stretch, the morning stretch, a mindful warm-up and cool down, morning wake up, and of course the beautiful calm scenes. Let's you pick one. Uh, you you want to go to Sunset Beach, wind in the pines. This is a good snowy one for uh, for winter. Let's have some wind in the pines, and we can, by the way, have that mixed in with our Sigur Ross. Now we're. Oh, how about underwater? Oh, it's so relaxing. I think you'll find a thousand ways to use calm, to calm yourself, to relax, and yes, to sleep better. And I like it so much, I want to give you a big discount on a premium subscription. That's what I've had for the last few years. 25% off if you go to calm.com, C A L M dot C O M slash Mac break. Calm.com slash Mac break. It's a great gift, too, by the way. I give this every year to my daughter because it's just such a relaxing, wonderful thing to have. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Calm.com slash Mac break. Access to the entire Calm catalog with new material every week, including Evergreen. She was, uh, you know, Evergreen. She's been in so many great movies. You know, if I, I showed you her face, you'd recognize her. She was know, the, exactly. Vesper, she's wasn't she Vesper Lyon? She was Vesper in uh, Vesper. At mm. Casino Royale. Yeah. Love her. The, the one woman that James Bond fell in love with <laughs> broke his heart. You just ruined it for everybody. Shh, I just said she that broke his heart. Only 12 years old. <laughs> I watched <laughs> it again the other day. I love it so much. That's Daniel, great. and partly because so the new Bond is coming out. Craig is still James Bond. Last one, I think. Last one. He's given it up. Oh, James. Oh, James. Do we know who the next Bond's going to be? No, not yet. There might be. I've, Maybe it'll uh, be a there's woman. This, yeah, there, there's, there's a rumor that there will be no more James Bonds, but there will be a new 007. Oh, that would be good. I yeah. like Idris Elba. He'd be great. But a woman could be could not be James, right? So it could be a woman, too. Who would you make it be? Would it, it be, could be uh, James. She could be Jamie Bond. <laughs> <laughs> she could be Laurie Gill. That's a name. <laughs> 007. My vote. Gill. It's my vote. Um, AirPods demand for the AirPods Pro so great that Apple is reported, reportedly doubling its production. This comes from the Nikkei uh, Asian Review, a Bloomberg report. Much higher demand. Uh, I'm actually not surprised because uh, I was the reaction to the AirPod Pro was so strong from all over the place. Yeah. Um, I think it's you just as I, mean, I think there are a lot of better, less expensive choices, including my favorite, the Galaxy Buds. But, um, you know, I think it's the integration yeah. that works. And this is where that's Apple, why yeah, you buy plays it. to Apple's yeah. strength, which yeah. is that they have uh, the, the hardware all working together with the software and they're able to develop it together. And I think that's the thing that's going to be really hard for other folks to 
reproduce, even if they're not and you, technically as good. Go ahead. AirPods were sort of a, a, almost a joke for a while, and then they suddenly became the most popular in-ear headphones, at least in terms of sort of like the memeiness of them. That was like about a year ago <laughs> that that happened. And so then everyone was all on board with, with AirPods, and then AirPods Pro came out. And right. so to me right now, this was the perfect time for them to come out yeah. because everyone kind of was, was on board with AirPods. Yeah. yeah, they're ready. And so this new version is kind Finally. of like now everyone wants it. A yeah, comfortable yeah, exactly. pair of AirPods that don't fall off. <laughs> Just yeah, what I've been exactly. waiting for. Exactly. Right? Yeah. How's yeah. the noise oh, canceling Apple. on them? Does it does it is it good? Does it work well? So I I used them on the plane when um I was on my way it's to Japan flight. and back. Yeah. And um th so they're not as noise canceling as uh, over the ear or on ear cans, but that's just because those cans just like they literally just Seal right it. on your head. Yep. So mm -hmm. what it does do though is it cuts out all of the noise, but allows in just sort of the sounds. If you know what I mean, the difference is the background if, if hum it, of the jets is canceled out because it's continuous. Completely canceled out. But but noise canceling anything doesn't work with intermittent stuff like babies crying or or a flight attendants yelling. And so those things come through. And you have probably, if the flight attendant's yelling, get out, it's on fire, you probably want to hear it's that. Like you want to hear it's that. It's regular yeah. noise that it's good with. It's not good with rapidly changing noise. Yes. It's anything like an engine hum, like anything that's just consistent. But honestly, right. I think the reason uh, frequent flyers wear noise-canceling headphones, going back to Bose, is because it does cancel out that <sighs> that you hear the whole right. time on the flight. And that helps a lot. Uh, I even have this great experience of just yesterday, actually, there was um, a snow, a leaf blower had come by to, um, you know, blow the yard. And it was, it, leaf blowers are the most annoying sounding thing oh, in I the world them. to I me. Agree. They, they cause just uh, attention. I need calm.com whenever, yeah, <laughs> whenever exactly the leaf mean. blower comes yeah. by. So I pop in th my, my AirPods pro and, it just canceled everything out. I didn't even have to turn anything on. I didn't listen to anything. I just popped them in my ears. Oh, and it just like negated that awful, awful sound. So I could kind of calm myself and continue working without hearing that the whole time. It's, just, it's pretty incredible that these tiny little things can have such a strong uh, noise canceling ability it, in, and not have to be these big things that go on top of your head. Do they allow leaf blowers in Canada, Renee? Yeah, except you only hear them half a year because they don't. Uh, the rest of the year, it's snowblowers. <laughs> <laughs> what ain't leaf blowers is snowblowers. I feel like some country should ban leaf blowers because I'll move there. <laughs> it really would. <laughs> we hear them for half some an hour. Some cities every, do. Every week. Well, yeah, they're often two stroke engines. They're horrible, polluting beasts. Mm -hmm. I have an electric one. Doesn't yeah, electric would be okay. Yeah. It's not very or just powerful. like, I, to me, fall is the sound of rakes, raking right. leaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, the smell of smoke as we burn the leaves in a pile on the street. <laughs> I smell them. They can't do that anymore. No. <laughs> definitely not here. <laughs> Intel says it sold to Apple at a great discount. It was forced to do so by those sons of bees, Qualcomm. <laughs> uh, Qualcomm's uh, patent licensing practices strangled competition in parts of the market for modem chips. And uh, Intel has filed a brief with the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Qualcomm uh, received a judgment uh, against them because of that, and they're trying to overturn it in the Court of Appeals. Intel's amicus brief says, oh, no, that's absolutely true. It cost us. And not only that, when Apple bought us for a billion dollars, it was a lot less than we were worth. We invested billions, said Intel, hired thousands acquired two companies and bit innovative world-class products that eventually made their way into Apple's industry-leading iPhones, including the most recently released iPhone 11. But when it was all said and done, Intel could not overcome the artificial and insurmountable barriers to fair competition created by Qualcomm's scheme and was forced to exit the market this year. At a, at a great loss, I added that part. We'll see. Yeah, you got to feel bad for Intel. <laughs> it's not been going well in general. If only they had chips to fall back on. <laughs>
You know, the other big story of, of Black Friday is uh, how well AMD's chips are selling. In fact, now outselling yep. Intel in many respects. They're they're basically desktop chips. Well, they're so. outperforming Intel's. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> less less expensive and faster. I think that the and no meltdown. I mean, the latest Intel ones are suffering from a, a pretty big regression thanks to meltdown. Yeah. even still in the tenth gen chips. Yeah. So uh, I wonder. You know, we keep talking about Apple moving to ARM. I wonder if Apple might move to uh, at least on its desktop. Might be looking at a move to Ryzen. And Threadripper. Threadripper. The next next generation Threadripper will have 64 cores. <laughs> <laughs> it'll probably be 8,000 watts, but it'll have 64 cores. <laughs> and it's only seven, but that's, the, that's, the, um, that's like the uh, Intel X version, right? The competitor is like a $7,000 chip, I think, still. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's probably the Mac Pro chip. Yeah. Or the iMac Pro chip. The, uh, Can you imagine a Threadripper iMac Pro? That'd be so great. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder. I yeah, I wonder. Now you don't get. I think you don't get Thunderbolt three natively with uh, AMD. It's. So. I think it's been spun off now. I think sometime a few months ago it was spun off and independently licensed. But I think there's probably a ton of integrations that Apple does with the known target anyway, that is Intel. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a hard thing to do. Uh, good article. I thought I uh, enjoyed reading it in uh, the Apple on the Apple Insider. About the this is Daniel Aaron Del Dilger, who's a great writer about the A7. How Apple's custom, and this is a while ago, custom 64-bit silicon embarrassed the industry. We're talking between 2010 and 2012. Uh, so if you like Apple history and you want to kind of, it always takes a few years to get the real behind the scenes of what was going on. If you want to know what was going on uh, when Apple came out with the iPhone 6 and uh, the A7 chip and what Samsung was going through. This is a great uh, article. It's well, pretty amazing because back then, like it was Silicon merchants, mainly like Qualcomm, and they were intent, the longer a chip sat on the shelf, the more profitable it was for them. So they were going to milk 32-bit for as long as they could before spending any money on 64-bit. And I remember people being in line for that event going, and I think Mark Gurman had leaked that the graphics chip was going to be 64-bit, not that the main processor but then apple announced the whole thing at 64 bit and all like the nantech people and the other i forget extreme tech they're just draws dropped and <laughs> yeah qualcomm at first is like no it's just a gimmick nobody needs nobody needs but it turned out like the arm v7 instruction set and the security editions and all of these things were just transformative it's it's really amazing to look back in hindsight at how hard that pushed the industry in such a short amount i remember of time. in 2013 People talking about, we probably talked about it too. Oh, the kids don't want iPhones anymore. iPhone is <laughs> is grandpa's phone. Yeah. And uh, and Apple t took that seriously. And I, I think we can look back at the 6 and especially the 6S. That was the first, 6 was the big phone, right? First big phone. Yeah. We can look back at that and say that was a turning point in Apple's, uh, in the iPhone's history. Um, when, when they suddenly come out with dual core 64-bit <laughs> mobile processors. The A7. And then remember, like, the 7. Like, people were like, oh, Apple's falling behind in AI. Apple's not... Pre and the iPhone 7 came out, and it had AI built into the silicon, a neural yeah. network that they'd started three years earlier and baked into the hardware already. Yeah. That was when... Uh, that, that's You can say that was a turning point. That's when you start started looking at Apple's silicon as, hey, you know, they're doing something pretty amazing. Yeah. So, a little bit of Apple uh, history. Yeah. And also, also, it underscores how much trouble other companies like Google have been having in launching products that there's like a big, big lake full of money that they should be able to just put a dragnet into and pull money out of. But they can't because they're limited to Qualcomm CPUs for their Wear right. OS stuff. And there's really no reason for even someone who is deeply, deeply, deeply a fan of Android to even consider buying an Android Wear or Wear OS watch right now because they're just so pathetic. It's like it's it's so much so much smarter for them to buy a competitor's watch or even an Apple uh, an Apple watch uh, if that's the the standard you're going to get by. So yeah, that's uh, Apple gets kudos for seeing in advance that this is, it's going to be so important for them to take their own take their own destiny into their own hands uh, with their own chip with their own chip designs to make stuff that is absolutely designed to handle what they want to make in the next five years, which really make, should make all of us really excited about what the first Mac that has. Uh, that that has an ARM processor designed by Apple is going to be able to do. Philip Elmer, like Google rated. Sorry, go ahead. 
was going to say Google raided uh, Qualcomm and Apple, and they got uh, they poached several really big players uh, yeah. from both of those teams, and they are, are all gone now. Like they lasted a very very short amount of time. It's very hard to put those types of teams together and keep them going. Uh, Philip Elmer Dewitt points out in his uh, blog ped30.com. Remember when market caps of Apple and Exxon were neck and neck? Now. <laughs> Now, Apple is more valuable than the entire U.S. energy sector. Yeah. Apple Apple's worth more than all large-cap U.S. energy stocks put together. $1.2 trillion. Apple's shares have climbed almost 70% this year. My dad calls uh, every Thanksgiving yeah. to remind me <laughs> that I told him to sell his Apple stock about six years ago. <laughs> And I think yeah. that when, when, when Jobs died, I said, it's all over. You should sell your stock. Oh, well, he calls me every Thanksgiving to remind and, me. And I think that the, the 70... He didn't, by the way. And he calls to remind yeah. me, I didn't. How's your stock doing? Sean, I'm on the yacht. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I, I, I think roughly the math, though, is that it's 70% it's seventy because they had a dip last year. And so it's really closer to 16 Percent okay. growth, and then yes, because it's only that, one point twelve trillion. It got we. I remember when it was one trillion last year. Yeah, I think it's like, like sixteen. I think yeah. it's sixteen. It, they had that huge drop when they said they're not going to report right. uh, iPhone sales anymore, and so they had. So it looks like seventy percent. It was really uh, if you bought one it in the trough, yeah, absolutely, you did great. Uh, if you still had it, it was it's a smaller growth, and it also you know is I'll being take sixteen percent year over oh, year yeah. every year. I think they uh, average like twenty. <laughs> I'd be very happy no, no, with my investments if they did that. No, absolutely. <laughs> no, no, it's it's uh, they've they've done really well if you if you yeah. stuck with them, and and the uh, I think it's also being inflated a little bit because they keep on buying back all that stock. You know so who else? That's true. Stock buybacks. Yep. And let's point out the energy sector ain't what it used yeah. to be. <laughs> exactly. It's <laughs> not not exactly a growth yeah, industry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got to get some uh we got to get some uh, advertisers for Philip on his uh on his blog though because his latest sponsor is Vandalay Industries, manufacturer of fine <laughs> latex goods. Uh a, a, a refer, reference that's back. It's a growth to company, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> when you grow, we grow. I think that's their uh, slogan, right? Um uh, uh should we do the Ming Chi Quo report? Because I don't trust <laughs> Ming Chi Kuo anymore. After I was just thinking that when I was reading this morning, I think the the start of the sentence is something like um, some, saying something about how his his uh, predictions are reliable or something like that. And I thought I kind of think at this point he's just throwing anything at the wall and seeing what sticks. And then some of them are right, and that makes him not quite as reliable anymore. Yeah, because for instance, Ming, if that's your real name. <laughs> I bought uh, I bought a uh, third another non Mac laptop because I because he said oh the 16 inches isn't coming out till 2020. Yeah, was that wasn't right. That wasn't right. Well, he does now say Apple will be releasing. I mean, anybody. I'm going to say it. Apple's going to release a 12.9 inch iPad in 2020, and yeah. <laughs> and a 16 inch MacBook Pro with mini LED. I don't. Oh, that's the screen, right? That's that new LED. Yeah, technology. yeah that's what the Pro Display XDR is made out of. It's gorgeous. Oh, is it? Is the XDR mini LED? I didn't know that. Yeah, so not this micro LED. A, People get those confused because they're oh. confusing terms. But mini LED. Oh, micro LED is the new TV technology that allows you to put panels together to make but a TV the of arbitrary are like three size. Inches. Big right now. They have to get that mini. So like mini display, sorry, mini LED is what we're getting next. And micro LED is after that, except on maybe things like watches and stuff in the short term. Oh, okay. Um, so it, it isn't really that much to say that Apple's going to do this. but They want to mitigate against OLED because OLED is a fantastic technology that has incredible problems with it. And they can do a lot of mitigations on a phone because the panel is relatively small. So maintaining continuous brightness isn't as big a problem. And you have to mitigate off-axis shift and burn and all these things. And what's so exciting about mini LED is that it, it because the, the LEDs are so isolated, it does give you deeper blacks. We've seen with the Pro Display XDR that it can do really good sustained brightness. So you get HDR because right now the iPads aren't HDR. LCD is like, we can do HDR, really? We'll go to like 600 nits. We'll, you'll call us <laughs> HDR, won't you, please? And they're like, no, no, we won't. Um, <laughs> and so they want to get to that technology and have it uniform over the whole panel. And it looks like mini LED is way better at OLED at delivering that. See, I have a number of OLED laptops. Um, I had a Lenovo OLED laptop. The new Dell uh, is offered. Apple doesn't like OLED. them and they're expensive at that scale. But so what is wrong with what is wrong with OLED? 
Yeah, for instance, it's uh, not continuous. Like the bright, the brightness level. So like the brightness levels vary. Um, so again, like Apple is super particular. They didn't do OLED on the iPhone for years after OLED was on a bunch of other phones because they had a, a certain checklist and it was like 80% at this and 90% at this. And they're like, no, we want 100% at all these things. Uh -huh. And it took until the iPhone 10 before they're like, okay, Apple is now happy. And it's to say like the, the <laughs> iPads and the MacBook displays, they're just not happy with. And they don't think that OLED is going to solve it at a reasonable yield and and price point so we for them because the iPhone panel is like 110 bucks already. We were having this uh, uh, conversation in the uh, Twit community because uh, somebody wanted uh, to buy a new uh, photography laptop, PJ. And uh, while initially said, I do love the Dell with the OLED, but it, but I'm not sure it's a good photography choice because yeah. how accurate is the OLED? And I really love the 16. I think that that screen with the true tone and with the accuracy uh, of that Apple really puts into its uh, screens is very good. Alex, is, is OLED a bad choice for a photographer? I don't know if it's necessarily a bad choice. I mean, I think there's a lot of good quality there. I think that the, the real issue is is that the, um, the the problems that we've already discussed with OLED, it's, it's, it's not so much that for photography, OLED's a problem. It's a problem with all the things that can happen to that screen. Um, okay. Uh, not being able to sustain brightness and burn in. And a lot of times when you get an OLED screen, it, uh, at least on, the, on phones, people... I guess this is true on laptops too. They go, oh, the colors really pop. And I think I, that sounds to me like inaccurate colors, right? That makes them hyper bright or hyper. The manufacturers do that. Like Samsung they does turn that it up. and some other manufacturers. Yeah. They want that. it to yeah. jump out. Yeah. So they, they, they People like that. But yeah, that's for contrast. a photographer. That's the kiss of death because you're going to. Yeah. You just want to be accurate. I mean, yeah. It, it, it bears repeating that color is also used for user interface and stuff like that. Right. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. But yeah, it's, you don't want these art. It's, it's, it's hard to. It's it's hard to convince somebody that a certain camera on a phone is better than another one when you're showing them pictures of natural realistic color, whereas on someone else's phone it's like they made the red super red, they made the blues right. amazing blue. Right. The greens are radioactive. Even on the iPhone with OLED, I think the, accu the accuracy is pretty good, isn't it? And the accuracy is amazing on an iPhone. It I mean, doesn't, it's... but it doesn't have that bright red poppiness that a Samsung. OLED. But if you put it next to an LED iPhone, they're almost identical, which to me That's is right. crazy good color calibration right, yeah. at the factory. Yeah. Does OLED have um, uh, burn-in problems or other uh, long-term yes. problems? Yes. Okay. And then there was for a while the issue of the purple dye fading faster than the other dyes. Is that still an issue, or is that? Sort of solid. The blue, yeah. The blue, okay. Yes, yeah, so I think they overload the blue so it lasts longer because as, as they die, it's still fine. And then enough of them die and you're, you're <laughs> not accurate anymore. So, all right. So it looks good. It might be great for a phone, but it's not, it wouldn't necessarily be the right choice for a laptop. Yeah. Only if well, it's different. Like the TV sets that LG makes, like LG does I not love make my the LG OLED phone oh, uh, panels. We've seen that. and But they make better OLED at scale, like at large TV sizes than Samsung right. because it's a very different technology. It uses okay. filtering and a bunch of other stuff. My LG OLED is a few years old. It's a 2016 model, but it's still my go-to if I Mine want to too. watch a beautiful movie. Right. Um, I just watched down. Watch Disney Abbey. Plus on it, Leo. It is or oh or yeah, Apple that's TV the other Plus. thing that's it exciting. Unbelievable. These new streaming yeah. shows really look good. In fact, you could tell some of the Apple TV Plus shows, like the morning show, are shot intentionally, like a lot of night scenes. To show off HDR, right? And the bit rate is so high on, compared to what we're used to oh, on interesting. streaming. interesting. Okay. Yeah, the bit rates, the bit rates are stunningly high. On, on Better than I, Netflix, say? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Netflix yeah. is... I, I don't even know why they spend so much money on their shows if they're going to compress them like that. Anyway, they're horrible. Like, I was, I was trying to watch... I was watching The Irishman, and there's all kinds of problems with it. I'm, I'm going to ruin it for everybody. Well, that, some of that was shot so, in film. Yeah. Some of it was shot... No, it was shot all shot in digital. film. Yeah. Uh, or almost all of it. Well, there's some digital because of the CGI. Yeah, they, so... They made, had to make them look younger. Right. I mean, they, they had some augmented... Um, a lot of the main plates were shot in, in uh, my understanding. I thought I saw that plates. they were using... Um, they were using digital cameras because yeah. they were getting extra angles of the faces and so on and so forth. But oh, I, I see. I think they were using those... So the main camera was a film. I believe so. I think they were using Panavision cameras okay. for the... But the... Um, uh, but it looks beautiful, and then it's got these, I don't know, at least my version of it seems to have keyframe issues where really? when it goes from close up to wide, you'll just see a couple frames that aren't quite right. Now, maybe just that I'm really sensitive. This to is that. why I'm glad I'm so not Alex, because he can't enjoy a yes. movie. Like there's a like movie. little, there's little, there's a little frame things, and, it, and usually that's from, and, 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 and I don't know, maybe it's just what I'm getting, but I'm seeing it, I don't see it anywhere other than that movie huh. where I see, um, uh, you know, jumps from a close up to a wide, and when he does that, off in the distance, you'll see this little like uh, reframe reordering that goes on, and it drives me crazy. Oh, 
crazy. <laughs> sorry. And for those of you who watch it and see it now, sorry. What's the verdict on Apple? Unsee it. What's the verdict <laughs> on Apple TV Plus? Uh, I feel like the shows are good, but there is no show that would drive people to subscribe. There's no Sopranos. There's no Game of Thrones. There's no. That's why like, it's like, you're free. Got, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. They don't have exactly. anything quite. I gotta have, have it. Have you yet. tried the servant yet, Leo? I haven't tried it yet. No, the new creepy. Shyamalan. I'm dying to watch that one, and that's uh, three three episodes of that are out as of Thanksgiving. Yeah. I can't decide. That you might know, be the the one. That might be. I like you Morning Show. It's good enough. Yeah. It's not great. It's okay. Um, I was really I enjoying like a little, little bit, like ham fisted. Yeah, a little ham fist is a good word for it. Yeah, a little ha yeah. part of that's Jennifer Aniston, who really doesn't have a lot of acting range. She seems to be angry or not. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> and I was saying, though, that the, the weekly schedule has been so good because everyone's talking about Mandalorian and Watchmen now, and they would never have been doing that if timing. they just dumped all the episodes. Yeah, perfect timing. Uh, yeah. For All Mankind started great. It's starting to lag a little bit for me now. I haven't watched C or uh, a lot of people love Dickinson. I'm hearing yeah, surprisingly good. strong comments. I heard a lot of good the, things about it. I can't get myself emo, to even think I that either. I would enjoy it. Like I was just, I was just looking at it like, I don't, that's not for me. It's an it's, emo poet. I mean, so far the only thing that's really hooked my family that's not that doesn't not necessarily Apple TV is The Mandalorian. So, and that's Disney yeah. Plus. That's Disney Plus, and it looks amazing. And and Disney Plus also streams at our higher quality. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's great. It looks great. And the I can't decide whether I like I. I hate the fact that I have to wait a week between every episode, <laughs> but at the same time I kind of feel like well, there's some kind of pacing that goes on. We talk about it for a little bit, and then we see the next one. And yeah, but that's yeah. for marketing. I honestly wait. Yeah. Because I don't. I, I want to see to. it in a bundle. I want to binge it because I but think spoilers, Leo. Very few I know, shows. That's the thing that I worry about. Very few shows do well if they're spread out week to week. I think it, it almost always a show is better if you watch it. I agree. I, 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 I think. I think. I think it depends it on it depends on the nature of it. I I watched the the latest series of The Crown, and that is this. That, it's oh, just such a such a it's it's a show. it's a river that flows yeah. at a constant stately. beat, mm -hmm. yeah. and so you kind of really it doesn't lose anything by chopping it up week by week. If anything, the fact that you you're the effects of uh, Princess Margaret's behavior two episodes ago is feeding into what's right. happening in the episode we're seeing now. But then there's so you, the you, shows you, like The Mandalorian where it's like you kind of want, a, especially because the world that you live in, you kind of want a week to like fanboy and fangirl out with everybody else about what you just saw and what the what might be coming up next week. So. You don't. You could binge the Crown. You know, it is all available. <laughs> oh, I do. No, no. That's why. That's what I'm saying. That's that's why. That's oh, why oh I, it's good I, to binge. I I, I, see. I waited. I, I waited a while because I knew that uh, I, there is no such thing as self control when it comes to like yeah. binging your favorite ah. shows. It's like I knew that as soon as I saw. If I just said, well, you know what? It's 11 p.m. I have to get up early tomorrow. I'll just like go to. I'll just watch the first episode. That's that's like I'm I'm not going to miss my appointment tomorrow morning because I will not have gone to bed yet. I will be. Uh, on episode, <laughs> I'll be watching episode eight like on my phone on the train on the way I, over there. My butt is still sore from Thanksgiving <laughs> because we not only do we watch three, Show title. three. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think my butt's Sorry. sore from Thanksgiving? Because we watch three football games in succession and then the entire Irishman. That's twelve oh, oh, wow. solid hours of TV. <laughs> And man, is my butt sore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saving the Irishman for like a real, like an entire night of the lights are down, The there's popcorn made. Let me make a recommendation. I, I did this and I was really glad. Watch Mean Streets first because mm. that's Scorsese's first in this gangster, you know, epic that he's been doing with a young 25-year-old De Niro, yeah. uh, young Harvey Keitel. It's really something to see. It's not his greatest movie, but it, but but if you watch it and then you watch The Irishman, you see how their book ends. They really go yeah. together. It's the same people. It's the same idea. It's right. really interesting. I thought you were gonna ever. I thought you were gonna advise a, a catheter. <laughs> and that. Sure that's, that's, uh, no, that's uh, the great thing about. I'm so glad they didn't release this. Well, they did, but I'm it, it, that I didn't see it theatrically because it is too long for a theatrical release. You're gonna miss. Something. How long is it, Leo? Three no. more than three hours. Two, I, I, 209 well, minutes or something. I find it fascinating. We were, my my um. Uh, my kids love watching Family Feud, which is completely inappropriate for kids. <laughs> I didn't really realize it's that. It's all until in you They don't know what they're, they don't know. Uh, they're starting to get it. They're starting to get old enough where they start thinking. They're starting to laugh at all the right places, which really bothers me. So the, uh, but uh, I just couldn't believe how off Family Feud has become. I don't remember it being that bad. Maybe it was always. Is that it bad. sexier than it used to be? Yeah, it seems like it. It uh, wasn't really. It like, used to be sexy. 
Not We're sexy. We're talking about like, family feud. Not sexy. Right? Uh, risque. The, risque. Sorry, innuendo. Richard, the innuendo Richard has Dawson, much, hubba hubba. It does kiss, less innuendo. You kiss innuendo. all the women on the lips, which I found disgusting. <laughs> he doesn't do that. They don't do that anymore. No, of course not. But this is me too looked, era. Yeah, exactly. Do that. But the... Uh, Anyway, it was but, disgusting even then. <laughs> but but it's what I what I find funny is like I just remember we, we had to watch and we have to watch a show because it's on TV right now and you have to watch it live and you know the kids just are just so used to the fact that you just pause it whenever you need to do something and and uh, I just realized we just don't have that anymore of that live. The most used button on my Apple remote is the pause button. Oh yeah, <laughs> I hit that all the time. Is I it watch. easier or harder to get your kids to do their chores or whatever? Oh, it's easy. Because you 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 can just make them watch TV later. They, they don't have to sit down and watch the show at a specific time. There's a whole bunch of chores that need to be done, and there's no screen time until the, until they are <sighs> done. And that, I don't have any problem at all. <laughs> like, like, you know, like, like there's not, like, they know that if they come upstairs and they're on their iPads, I'm, the first thing that I'm going to ask them is that their room's clean and their beds are made and they're, you know, all that stuff. And it's always done. Because they, they just know that yes, that's... Yes, Daddy. Yes, Daddy. Well, we I mean, want I'm to watch saying, TV, Daddy. I'm just saying that... that <laughs> Can we watch... Do they call it even... TV or they call it... Daddy, we want to watch screen. No, they, they still call it TV. <laughs> the television. <laughs> you know what really makes your Apple TV sing? Plex. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. baby. Not just your Apple TV, your Roku, your computer, your iPhone. Plex puts together all the media you care about in one app on any device, no matter where you are, it was a lifesaver as we're traveling. I've got my Plex server running at home. I've had a Plex pass, lifetime pass for a long time. but it, so And I do recommend the lifetime pass. But even without it, you can use Plex for free. And it is a great way to organize and stream your personal collection of movies, of TV shows. You drag and drop your files into it. Plex automatically organizes it, even adds additional features so it, it, it becomes like a DVD with the, with the extras, cast interviews, trailers, behind-the-scenes features. But it also has music. It works with your title, so it even does high-res music. Your favorite podcasts, web series, new, even news now. Give your media the royal treatment it deserves. Get yourself a Plex Pass. With premium features, you can bring out the best in whatever media you have. With a Plex Pass, an antenna, and a tuner, Forget cable, baby. Enjoy great TV. It's a DVR. You can record free HD broadcasts right into your library. I uh, I am waiting. I've been waiting for uh, Silicon Dust to put out their HD Home Run uh, Prime. Six tuners. That is going to be the ultimate Plex machine. I'm so excited about that. Uh, you get offline accessibility with Mobile Sync. You can sync your movies, shows, TVs, music, and photos to your mobile devices Get, get on the airplane. I got everything from my DVR on my iPad. Try to do that with your cable company DVR. You get premium music, lyrics, custom curated playlists based on your preferences, premium photos. So if you put your photos in your Plex server, you get great albums. You can customize, even share them. That's another great thing about Plex. You can share. If you've got a Plex server, you can share your content. Get cinema. And in fact, you can have different users in the house even. So your kids can have their Plex account with parental controls turned on. You can have your Plex account. Your wife can have her Plex account. It is a lean back experience second to none. It's getting, it gets better and better all the time. And when you're a Plex uh, pass user, you even get advanced access to new features. When that new, they call it Plex pass perks. When that new UI came out, I had it before anybody else. And man, I love it. Uh, you also get promos and discounts on partner products. There's some more features like loudness leveling. If you listen to music, you'll love sweet fades, timeline view, advanced audio features. Are you ready to get a Plex Pass? I think you really want it, and I'm going to get you 10 bucks off the Lifetime Pass. This is for new subscribers only. When you go to plex.tv slash twit and enter the code twit10. It's still very, even without 10 bucks off, it's very affordable. I was happy to pay for the Lifetime Pass. When I saw how much it cost, I said, man, I'm going to use this for years. It's well worth it. Now you take 10 off when you use the promo code TWIT10 at plex.tv slash twit. Don't forget to use the offer code TWIT10 so they know you heard it on Mac Break Weekly. We love the Plex. Yeah, it's it's and it's it's like it's like putting up it's it's like putting up wine in a cellar. 
And the, after two or three or four years, when you realize that I now have the server that I've just been oh, yeah. steadily adding content to, and now it not only has everything, but it's organized exactly how I want it to be organized. So anything I want, it's not, I don't have to go through any, hey, here's a good Tuesday after Thanksgiving playlist of hots. It's no, it's like you, you're the, it's everything you, it's, it's just, I can't recommend it highly enough it's like it turned me from someone who didn't who had lots of music in a library but didn't listen to much of it back when it was all on itunes to someone who listens to music every single day and always exactly nice. what i want to listen to nice high recommendation besides that do you have a pick of the week mr nutco Yes, I do. And it is an upgrade to one of my favorite apps. Uh, uh, Daniel Jalkut of uh, Red, Sweater, Red Sweater Software has upgraded his desktop uh, crossword puzzle app to uh, 2.0, Black Ink 2.0. <gasps> uh, and it's uh, if you like crossword puzzles, this I is do. going to ruin your entire week because it is exactly every way that you would like to be able to do crosswords and manage crosswords. Uh, and it, you get it'll. it's not just, hey, buy... We buy our crossword puzzle pack for two ninety nine a week. It's no, it, it's it is simply like a player, a reader for other other uh, crossword puzzle services. So no matter what, uh, what no matter where you're getting your crosswords from, you can actually use this as your as your puzzle app, uh, and it is so easy to use that you forget that you're using it. You're just focusing on not being able to finish a Tuesday New York Times crossword puzzle. Oh, I uh, thank they, you for this because I I did. While I was on vacation, 25 days, 25 New York Times crosswords. Oh, and wow. I love them. Uh, and the yep. New York Times app is pretty good, but I bet you, I know Daniel, I bet he did a better job, yes. right? He's got to give you something yeah, a little the, bit better. The, the, original, the original was terrific. And this is, uh, you love to see an app that's been around so long that at some point, the developer says, you know what, I'm just going to rebuild this from the ground up because it was great. It was it was the app I wrote a long time ago was great, but now we've got these other, I, I've learned so much since then. And I've got so many different ways to make it better. Another way that they've made it better was changing uh, the registration policy where uh, now it's totally free as a crossword puzzle getter and filler app. So oh. it's free for a lifetime. If you pay the not, the rather, uh, rather okay registration fee, then you get the ability to like, like find out what solutions are, uh, time things, do records of uh, of what you're doing. Uh, but it's the sort of thing where you kind of after after using it. When I bought the first one, it was because I used it for the for like a couple of days and said I really want him to get a whole bunch of money from me. Yeah, that's this, why. This I mean, it's thirty app. bucks. That's why I would do it because I, you know, really all I'm doing is downloading the Times puzzles. But uh, and and Times will let you do that. You can download the puzzles and use it in Black Ink yeah. instead of uh, in there. Good. That's great. And what other yeah, and you can, what other good crossword uh, sources are there? Uh, I'd have to I'd have to launch up my app to get it. I, I get into a crossword jag like four times a year, and then I either then I I, I admit I kind of get beaten down by by hubris. I like I I will I will just like do the easy ones, and then oh you know what I'm going to try the Wednesday Thursday Friday oh, times yeah, crosswords, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like I think I think I need another month to regain my self esteem. <laughs> I know exactly. I got to the point uh, where I could do a Monday in about five ten minutes. I think is my kind of average time. But uh, man, it no. takes. By the time you get to Friday, is is Saturday <laughs> harder than Friday, or is Sunday is the hardest? Sundays is the well, it's the biggest. Yeah, it takes me about an hour and a half to do a Sunday, but uh, so they get progressively harder in the New York Times. The thing I don't like, it, a Thursday has is like cutesy games, word games and stuff. Yeah, and it, it's kind of fun because when you finally figure it out what the trick is, you go, oh, I get it yeah. now, and then it all solves but, fast. It's fun. And, and that's and that's another nice thing about it. It will also let you just simply print these things out. There are times where, like, if I can't, particularly the, the, the Wednesdays where I feel as though I have the ability to solve this if I take more than, like, a day to do it. So I will print it out and stick it in, like, my little hardback notebook that I keep in my bag. Oh, wow. So you can keep noodling on it, as, do it as time goes by. Like it was meant to be done with a yes. pencil or a pen. <laughs> Red sweater, Daniel Jalkut and his uh, updated version. I'm looking at the... Uh, it does New York Times Premium, but there's other crosswords. The American Values Club, Ashley L. V. Smith, Brennan M. M. Emmett Quigley publishes puzzles of his own creation. Crossword Fiend, Fireball yeah. Crosswords. That's from the Peter Gordon, formerly of The Sun. Grids These Days, The Incubator, McNamara's <laughs> Band. I've never even heard of these. I can't wait. This is great. Crossword Puzzle 
fans unite. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. I'm going to download it the minute I get home. Love that idea. How about you, Ms. Gill? What do you got for us? Well, in honor of uh, post-Thanksgiving and upcoming holiday cooking, oh. I have the meter. Oh, I have one of those. That's the greatest this, thing ever. <laughs> this thing is amazing. It's a wireless meat thermometer. You plug in a near meat. Uh, it has an app um, on your phone uh, that connects to it. You can set the temperature that you want the meat to reach, the amount of time you want it to take. You can even pick from pre, uh, pre-selected um, recipes, if you will. And it's fairly accurate. I, the first time I used it, I cooked an entire turkey, a 20-pound turkey with it. And I, I judged it off of another really good quality um, wired thermometer and found that they were just off within a couple of degrees. Who knows which one was the more, the more accurate one. But basically, putting the meter into the meat, I could literally just walk away from the food. I didn't feel like I had to check it every few minutes and, you know, make sure that it was cooking up properly. It's, it's fantastic. I love it. I use it all the time. Um, and they, they make just a, this gorgeous, I mean, like to me, the, the best part about it is the, the design of the case that the meter comes yes. in, the <laughs> holder more, that it comes in it's is like so fantastic. It's so cool. And it has, um, uh, magnets on the back so you can just like stick it to your refrigerator. It's gorgeous. And, uh, I think everybody should have one. The case, um, they, the they case work charges really well. the thermometer too. It's like the, yeah, uh, it has AirPods, a, battery a battery on case. the back, and yeah. it charges it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Like I have it. such I have such love for for companies that make uh, tech tech powered kitchen products that are designed to be used in the kitchen as opposed to people who like are used to designing like Bluetooth headphones and now they're making a kitchen item that you can, it will never be where you need to use it and it will it will never survive like being kicked around a drawer and yeah that's 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 such a great thing about this thermometer do you have the meter or the meter plus I actually have both. I have the meter and right now I've got the meter plus which I haven't used yet. I just got it. So I'm going to be um checking out the special abilities with the meter plus cuz I, I think it gives you extended range if I'm yes, not mistaken. That's I think what that's I need. what makes it. Cuz when I use yeah, it so in the can, grill and I go inside I lose my meter cuz it's bluetooth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It only gives you I think the normal one only gives you about 30 and I think the meter plus gives you 50. What's the, what's the maximum temperature? That it can withstand. Well, I'd, put, I'd cook it in my hot grill, like 700 degrees. I don't. Yeah, I've yeah, I've I've bar I've barbecued with it. I've yeah. grilled with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know how they do it, because uh, my grill is so hot. When I use the chimney to heat start the coals, it's bright red. I feel like I'm a blacksmith taking <laughs> taking it out of the forge. <laughs> I want to get my hammer. <laughs> and of course, they always have. I don't know why they do this on those chimneys that you start grills with. They have plastic handles that melt the first yeah. time I use it every single time. Right, I get a little yeah. puddle of plastic. I don't. It's. I I had one with a wood handle. Yeah, that's and what that you need. Fire. I caught fire. <laughs> <laughs> <It was> fire. <laughs> you can't win. Meter. You can't. It is a. I completely agree with you, Laurie Gill. I'm going to get the new one. That's really exciting. M e a t e r. And look, for people who cook a lot of meat, they got the the four <laughs> meter pack. Look at that. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Pretty Canadian. Not sure why anyone needs four, but there you go. Well, <laughs> it's uh, it's two hundred twenty-eight bucks, so you must cook a lot of meat, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. Parallel processing of your meat cooking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Renee Ritchie, pick of the week. So uh, Peak Design, who makes a lot of really popular backpacks, especially for people in our industries, Love has released them. their second generation bags. Unfortunately, their website is down. They're doing part of the 72 company carbon oh. correction movement thing. <laughs> but uh, The Verge has everything from that website plastered across their site. So I put the link for that in there instead. But they just they took a lot of input from a lot of people who have been using these bags a lot of times. And they've done things like improve the comfort of the shoulder straps, uh, just the general design of the bag. It was always just a little bit tight if you wanted to put like a, a, a laptop and a iPad in there. And they, they fixed just a lot of those things. I am still a huge proponent of backpacks. I don't like messengers because they pull your spine in two different directions. And if you use them a lot with heavy things, you will inevitably have posture problems late in life. And I would love to spare anybody that sort of pain. <laughs> so a really good backpack. It's got better hip support, better, better everything. And it has that sort of stylish YouTuber blogger credibility <laughs> that is absolutely so important in our industry. 
I use uh, Peaks camera straps. They're like seat belts yeah. uh, on all my cameras. And uh, they have a hand strap that I use uh, as well. I really like. And uh, like Retcon 5 in our chat room, I have ordered the Peak Travel uh, tripod. I'm st we're st all still waiting for I it. I have too. Yeah. It's expensive, but I love the idea because it's very compact. Uh, it, it was a um, oh, peak sight is down. I wonder if I could see. But it. apparently, it's better for 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 stills than video. I don't know what that means yet, but that's what I've been hearing. I don't know what that means either. I don't know. Is it a fluid head? Uh, Maybe it doesn't. I know what it means. I don't know what the head is. The, I, the yeah, idea is fluid, great. Is that a non-fluid fluid head? Fluid head. Oh, it's not a fluid head. It's not a fluid head. Oh, so you can't pan and stuff. Right. Yeah, well, that's usually who what cares about that? Say. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's usually yeah. what people. Yeah. This looks like a really uh, cool. It's expensive. But uh, I guess we'll all have one <laughs> when, it, when it comes. Uh, Alex, I left the uh, most expensive for last. <laughs> Alex, I don't, know, I don't know how it's not that expensive. It's not that bad. Um, so this is uh, the Blackmagic ATEM Mini. And this is actually uh, a, a nod to, to our earlier conversation before the show about um, getting um, your camera into the computer. So uh, for Renee, was talk Renee and I were yeah. talking about this. So this is a switcher oh um and it is super small mm -hmm. and for the price and for the size super powerful so, so this four is, four camera switcher you four can do four switcher. four cameras four hdmi cameras it doesn't have sdi in which is fine for a lot of people um you have you, you have an hdmi out but more importantly you have a usb out and that usb will act as a webcam so it will look like a webcam when it goes into your computer wow. so it just so now you can oh. yeah <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this is this gonna, is the ultimate for like the home vlogger or podcast. Well, not only that, I kind of think that we should get them all for for all of us because it means that you could be switching between I think all so your too. inputs. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, because because it shows up as a webcam, it means that Skype can see it and Zoom uh, and everything else. So, if you're doing if you're doing a, a if you want to impress people, you know, for your next Skype call or your next pitch, uh, little pitch or whatever over anything, whether it's uh, meet or hangouts, um, uh, Skype, Zoom, or you can have with wipes, OBS. transitions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> picture in picture. It's got a low. It's got a single. It's got a downstream keyer, so you could add a little lower thirds. Um, but it, but again, a lot of times, if you're trying to just do a little training or you're doing a, a presentation, this is the way to do that. Like enough of the little software tools that come with all these these devices, they're not nearly going to do what this does. Um, you still have the full basically the ATEM controller, which can just be software control. You don't, you could actually hook an entire switcher up, you know, switcher control surface up to it, but you can also use just the, um, uh, just, just a laptop or even an iPad uh, to, to run it um, as far as uh, switching. And of course, because it's hardware, you can just simply tap on the keys to, to switch. And this is just a great little switcher to um, allow you to, uh, you know, actually be able to Put together something simple. It's not a replacement for the bigger switchers that that I've used uh, by by Blackmagic, but if this is the thing that I'd be tempted to like carry around, if if I was still doing as many hangouts, I mean, we did all these I mean, over a thousand hangouts, whatever. This is what I would have sent out. Yeah. Um. And the How value much? is three hundred bucks. Oh my God. Holy cats! What is yeah, the, yeah. Uh, it says secret yeah. broadcast features built in. What is secret? Secret? Did it say secret? <laughs> yeah. A10 Mini even has secret broadcast features built in, so it could do high end work. But I don't know it's what those. Well, I, I don't know if it's secret, but I mean, it has it has a chroma key built in. It's got it a lower third, yeah, a basic chroma key. It's not their their well, ultimate yeah. technology, but it's it's good. So you'd have um, one. Maybe you hook up to a computer, a yeah, single, but, a two shot, exactly. uh, and then. Um, uh, what else? I don't know. You could uh, have right. the picture out your window. Well, yeah, I mean, or an overhead. Like if you're doing a training, let's overhead, say you're doing like yeah. a cooking stream or something like that, you can have your little micro that's up above, now, like pointed down at the it. The mics and, are uh, audio jacks, analog audio. They're jacks, little three point yeah. five audio jacks, and so you know they're 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 fine. I mean, for something basic, um, yeah. you know, you're going to be able to you you could hook a mic up to it, and you know, one of the little the little less expensive mics. I mean, this is not built to replace. You, you couldn't know, even big, hook a USB mic to it. Or could you hook it up to your uh, computer? You could hook the USB mic up to your computer. And then have the only mix. challenge you'd have yeah. there is uh, sync. Right. So you just got to make sure that the app that you're using can allow you to make adjust your audio right. sync. Um, by going straight into the switcher, you're you're ensuring that it's going to stay in sync. Um, and so uh, so anyway, it's and it's 1080p. So it's it it for most things uh, is is great. Uh, I could actually. It's still, I don't use more than four cameras on the tech guy. I could do. 
I get yeah. my, <laughs> my studio. I could do the whole thing. And it's super small, super easy to use. The the other thing that's that's uh, that's interesting is that it's still using the same backbone that all the other switchers use. So the, all the APIs and everything else are all there. So you can you can run the switcher if you want if you want to write code. You can customize a lot of what it does and build your own little buttons. It also works with. We, and we do that a lot with the bigger switchers where we have, um, we build custom buttons that do certain things. So you can run the ATEM software on a Mac. Or PC. Or PC. Not iPad, though. Which is uh, there's iPad apps that, that use the API. So there oh, are ways to control it with an iPad. Okay. And I think even an iPhone. I'm not sure. Um, so so there, there, there are iOS apps that people have written. And they're not black magic apps. Right. Um, but it's using the same thing. And so the great thing also is, is that if you start with this and then you go, okay, now I want a bigger switcher. Right. The interface is, you're not going to learn a new interface or a new switcher. You're just going to take all the stuff that you already know how to do and do it. So it's, it's a pretty... Um, it's an incredible value. I mean, I, it's probably one of the best video values I've seen ever. <laughs> I mean, for 300 bucks. And, and again, one of the big things is, is the fact that it, it's just a USB camera to your computer. So if you're using OBS or Wirecast or Skype or all these other things, you just simply plug it in. Even if you only had one camera, this, is, this would solve, Renee, this kind of solves your camera issue. Um, where even just one camera, will, it'll just come in as a you can you you can use it and it should it should work just fine uh, with your okay, camera. Awesome. But you can start adding other cameras if you want to show us a close up of whatever you're recommending, or you want to jump to a screen, or you want to do a you know there's a variety of things to do there. So it's pretty what uh, would you recommend as um, the cameras? Because it's HDMI, right? So you'd want a camera well, like our Vixie is that we use. They have HDMI out. We actually have to put a converter the good news on is, it and then switch it to SDI. Yeah, the good news is is that they um, you can use these less expensive cameras. I mean, for me, I I really like the micros. You know, the micro. Uh, there's the micro 4K, which is what I have a bunch of. Um, but you can also get there's a 1080P version for like a thousand dollars that are these little micro um, micro studio cameras. They're almost the size of a webcam so they're and they're black ah. magic so they're, they're they're small and the here's the thing is is you're kind of growing in that ecosystem so those cameras you'll keep on using you could use them for your little studio but you can we've used them on huge events as witness cameras and overhead cameras and crowd cameras and you know there so there's a lot of um different ways to do that that's what i would probably instantly go to those are four thirds yeah um chips um you know, so, and for a lot of the stuff that I do, I, I use those as kind of like the close-ups over the cam over the table or that type of thing. Because they're it light. Is, it is not currently uh, available. It might be back-ordered. You have to, uh, it says pre-order. <laughs> they're shipping. So. I mean, they're shipping, but, you know, the demand was, they showed them off at IBC in September and the demand has been. Oh, okay. If uh, you're not pressure. Alex, you have to wait a little while. Oh. <laughs> there's a lot of people that want want the switcher okay, just keep talking because i'm yeah, ordering so, it right now <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. i was i mean I was, I was prepared to like mute my uh, mute the audio before you said the price because i didn't want to get my heart broken by another <laughs> thing that like yeah, exactly. alex has that i deeply want but can't afford but now we got the that weasel in my head is saying we have three hundred dollars yeah <laughs> we're, we're gonna make another three hundred dollars very quickly we can, <laughs> we can buy this and then and then i can get two of them yeah <laughs> the, the hardest well, part will be just waiting for have to buy new cameras Black Magic has been hitting on all all cylinders, and so generally everything they release now is like backordered forever. Yeah, it took yeah. me it took me a month and a half to get my six K camera. BNH says new item coming soon, but uh, that's often what BNH. They, says. they there are people that have them in the wild, so they're they're out there, but they're <laughs> again they're they're um uh, not in large quantity yet. But it's a great again for business presentations, for classes, uh, for small video stuff. It's ama an amazing little switcher. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm going to get one so that is... uh, when Lisa and I are going to do our home yep. podcast. Yep. That's it. We could do it on the yes. kitchen counter. <laughs> <laughs> and, Leo, and, and, and Leo, I, I don't give out compliments easily, but I'm going to say that your idea to buy one of these for all of us that you had <laughs> is typical of the brilliance and forethought <laughs> that has led to... Fortunately, Lisa stops me whenever I try to do oh, something like yeah. that. <laughs> that's Maybe we will, actually. I, that's, a, that's a good, uh, that's a, if you can make a strong case for it, Andy, and I think you probably can, because you had, what was it, Crane Cam 3000? Crane Cam. <laughs> Cam, yeah, Crane Cam 3000, also, also uh, Podcasts in a Sack 1.0. 
Uh-huh. Yeah, that, so that's going to that's going to be coming back when the weather and is also no the, quite so nasty. Power requirements very low. I mean, for something like CES, it could be a good little mobile. You know, you could literally be switching. <laughs> Do you mind if I set up my switcher? We <laughs> but it's not. But it's like literally, we've done ones where we've gone mobile with it, where we needed something that small, um, where we've done live use, and we have. Uh, we did a, a shoot that had you know four wireless cameras coming back to a little switcher. And well, at the I time, we were using an Apollo. It, increasingly, we were going to do shows out in the field, and we don't we can't take a switcher with us. But if we had something, this is it sounds like it's relatively portable. It's very portable. Yeah, could throw in my suitcase. Uh, we'd have to. I don't know. We should think about it. We have to bring some. But so, I mean, seriously, for for someone for someone like not for me, but for someone like you or for someone like Renee, particularly for for three hundred dollars, you could almost like buy it and just have it standing by, and then. Yeah. There's on three days notice. Oh my God! Thank God I have this thing because that's the perfect. That makes everything so simple. I think Renee's been quiet because I think he's been ordering this <laughs> while we've been talking. No, I t confession. The uh, Sergey, Sergey, and Larry just retired and handed the co the company what? over to Sundar Pichai. And I've been reading. I was reading their new founders letter. Oh, oh my God. goodness! They've retired. The founders yeah. of Google have retired. I wonder, wonder what A we're going to talk Larry about tomorrow. There it is. Yeah. Letter from uh, Larry and Sergey. Our very first founder's letter began. Na, 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 na. So that's interesting. They're both retiring at the same time. Um, I think they're both just what tired is, of what is Larry, is Larry, is Larry the, <laughs> technically the Enough. chairman of Alphabet? What is his role been? They were, uh, Sundar was running Google and they were running Alphabet and now Sundar is just going to run everything. Wow. Sundar Pichai promoted to CEO yeah. of Alphabet and Larry and Sergey uh, off to uh, land on Mars <laughs> or whatever it is they want to do next. They well, are. Sundar, he's been so uh, terrific he's that I really kind of good. Larry and Sergey were still around. Yeah, he's really yeah. good. And uh, and people like Ruth Porat, their CFO, have really, uh, you know, they've kind of moved to the foreground as uh, Sergey gets weirder and weirder and Larry can't talk. It really <laughs> yeah, seems like... Yeah, health issues. Yeah, it really seems like this is probably a, a good thing to do. And they both have more money than God, so... Um, I'm sure they'll do something wild in the yeah, future. Founder, uh, yeah. yeah. So, I, th I think they're actually angel investors for God's next startup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sundar brings, they write, humility and a deep passion for technology to our users, partners, and our employees every day. He's worked closely with us for 15 years through the formation of Alphabet as CEO of Google and a member of the Alphabet Board of Directors. He shares our confidence in the value of the Alphabet structure. That's important because, of course, Google has a very odd setup yeah. and the ability it provides us to tackle big challenges uh, through technology. There's no one that we've relied on more since Alphabet was founded and no better person to lead Google and Alphabet into the future. We are deeply humbled to have seen a small research project develop into a source of knowledge and empowerment for buildings, build billions. A bet we made is two Stanford students that led to a multitude of other technology bets we could not have imagined. It's, it's not even been that long. Back in 1998, 21 years ago, when we moved our servers from a dorm room to a garage, the journey that would follow. Wow, that is a big shift um, and a big change. And, of course, it comes as Google's facing a lot of headwinds from its own employees, from government, um, and uh, even on the, in the marketplace, frankly. Yeah. So I can understand why they might want to say, yeah, maybe time to let somebody else. Spend more time with their families, and their families want to spend more time with their money. So it's a good yes. bet for everybody. Yeah. I'm always surprised when someone has fifty billion dollars and and things get complicated. Well, I I, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. How, how much money does anybody need? I, I would have been you know, with with. No, I would have been. If I, I had that much money, I'd be dead by now. I would have like wanted to fly my own seven forty seven. I just want to point out this is why we are all not the founders of mega <laughs> exactly. billion dollar companies. <laughs> exactly. You know, it takes a certain drive and ambition right. Right. that exceeds how much money you have in your bank account. Hey, I'm still young. I'm just saying. You could yes, be. That's true. Sick Burn <laughs> Incorporated, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. That's Lori Gill, managing editor at iMore, Appaholic on the Twitter, lead singer from Japan sensation Sick Burn. It's great to have you on the show. And I'm, you're going to be back on Thursday. You're going to drive down finally. I've never met you in person. She's, I'm excited. It's going to be She's going to be so right fun. here at the round table, along with uh, Mary Jo Foley and Stacey Higginbotham. They're all coming out. We're going to do our annual Christmas show. And this year, it is the end of a decade, not merely the end of a year. So I think looking back on the decade, the 2010s will be uh, the mission statement for our end of year episode. We'll be taping it live 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2200 UTC on Thursday. You'll be able to watch us tape live and then 
we release it a few days uh, before Christmas. I think December, what is it, 23rd, Karsten? What do we decide? I can't remember. 22nd. 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 Uh, our holiday uh, episode, and then of course it's our best of on December 29th. We take a, we give everybody a little time off to uh, enjoy the holidays. So I'll see you Thursday, Lori. Yes, That's I'm gonna excited. Be a lot of fun. Alex yes. Lindsay, he is the man uh, at PixelCore.com, also at Alex Lindsay on the Twitter. And we love having you back in studio for at least a Good little bit before you take your ATEMs back on the road. <laughs> uh, we will uh, see you next time. Yep, Thank absolutely. you, Alex. Andy Anako, when are you going to be on GBH? Uh, this week I'm going to be on on Thursday, and so I, I guess half of it's going to be about Google. And uh, you, <laughs> but, just, but, you just you just got your least. mandate, didn't you? Yeah, this is like I, I wasn't I wasn't paying as close attention as Renee was, so now a lot of things on my docket have just shifted. Yes. So I guess on, on the plus side, on the plus side, I, know, I maybe don't have to read the 380 something p pages of PDFs of research papers that I had downloaded for another topic that I was going to be discussing on Thursday instead. So I, I think we all remember when Google, you know, started. In fact, Dvorak at the time used it as a litmus test for geeks. He said, what's your favorite search engine? And if you said Alta Vista <laughs> and not Google, then he knew you were really serious. Yeah. I remember yeah. when we battled for Gmail beta, beta invites. Remember you to get in the oh, Gmail yeah. beta and people were yes. selling them on eBay? My f favorite memory of Larry and Sergey is having lunch with them in uh, San Francisco down in that, what is the park where Twitter, uh, Twitter is? South Park. Um, this was, they were, Google was so new, they were still inviting tech journalists to come to lunch with Larry and Sergey <laughs> to meet them and find out more about this new search engine called what Google, uh, and uh, I'll never forget that it was quite an event. Uh, and now, in hindsight, it was uh, the beginning of something very special. And of so, course, Sergey jumping out of that plane. And being can you remember? Remember that? Right yeah, that was right crazy yeah. at a Google I/O. Yeah. Or was it a Google? He didn't jump keynote? out of the plane. He. he everybody no, else did. He was on the roof yeah. though in his. Yeah. rocket suit or whatever. For Google glasses, yeah. <laughs> that was the Google Glass uh, reveal. And, and his five-toe vibrams. Yes. <laughs> He's a character. He's a character. Yes. Um, Mr. Rene Ritchie, you can. His videos, and I bet you Vector will have a topic today that'll be a little different uh, at, at imore.com slash Vector. That's his video podcast. Of course, he is uh, in charge over there at imore.com. It's great to have you on the show. All the way from sunny Montreal, Ladies and gentlemen, we do this uh, show every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC. No, 11 a.m. plus 1800 UTC. <laughs> if you want to watch live, you can. Just go to twit.tv slash live. If you're doing that, chat with us at irc.twit.tv. There was a uh, question on the Hacker News this morning. Does anybody still use IRC? We do, we do, yes. we do. IRC.twit.tv. If you're not watching live, you can get an on-demand version of everything we do at our website, twit.tv. In the case of this show, it's twit.tv slash mbw. And you can still join the conversation because we have a kind of an asynchronous chat at our community, twit.community. You're all invited to uh, stop by and say hi. Many of our hosts are in there as well. Um, if you don't download from the website, Actually, my suggestion is don't download it automatically with your podcast application. That's the whole point. That's why it's a podcast. Uh, just, you know, go and subscribe in iTunes or whatever you use, Pocket Cast, Overcast, uh, Stitcher, Slacker, Spotify. Just search out MacBreak Weekly, click the subscribe button, and then you'll get it automatically the minute it's available later in the day on Tuesday. Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Uh, and now, I'm sorry to say, as Alex Lindsay says, it's time to get back to work because break time is over. See ya. <laughs>